Hello, everyone. Uh, what? Wow, that was weird. Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to It's a Long Story, a place where we roll dice, we tell stories, and we create magic. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are here with the OGs, the originals, uh, the Mongoose crew. Everybody take a look at their camera, wave, and say hi. 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 Uh, excited to have you guys uh, here. If you are the first uh, first time watching this, uh, welcome. Uh, this is a D and D live play where we uh, play Dungeons and Dragons and and have some fun uh, in some deep introspective uh, world. Uh, what makes this a little bit different than the rest is that we actually have four uh, different parties that play throughout the week: uh, Monday, Wednesday, t- sorry, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday, um, that all exist in the same world, uh, pretty much at the same time, uh, give or take. We're kind of in a weird sort of like. Uh, if anyone's calculating days, uh, there's a certain sort of spot where things are going to get a little funky here pretty soon. Uh, but we we do a little bit of hand-waving in that. But it's super fun. So we have uh, characters that kind of come in and out, uh, other uh, other players that have to join into certain spaces here. It's really fun. Um, so I hope you like it. Um, before we jump into tonight, just a couple of announcements. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Shadows of the North Shore, our Candel Obscura homebrew game. Uh, homebrew, homebrew game? <laughs> homebrew game. Uh, we are still uh, looking for uh, players for that. Uh, for those who are unfamiliar, Candel Obscura is a... Uh, cosmic horror game uh designed by darrington press friends over at critical role um it is uh essentially very like kind of like call cthulhu-ish high stakes you could very well die um but uh, a little bit more in the creative sort of spin uh low on the rule set very much rule of cool in a lot of cases and uh an extremely easy dice system to learn so very easy to learn how to play um so we did our play test of that uh back in september um so if you want to check that out please check that out on the uh youtube it's under uh shadows of the north shore a Kendall obscura playtest. um and uh yeah if you're interested in playing we are still looking for players or full full a full campaign uh, we've been looking for a while so um yeah oh uh you need to know where to go for that uh so uh for those who are watching on youtube you can access most of these links with the video description that should be below the video uh, but also i'm going to put it in the private chat for anybody who's watching live uh also no instagram today sorry gang i don't know what happened uh also, we have uh, February is another one shot month. So uh, every Saturday and Sunday, uh, except for the 17th, uh, because that will be when uh, me and my amazing wife will be spending Valentine's Day together. Um, uh, that's 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 true. Did he praise? Oh, no. <laughs> he just pointed at her. <laughs> Guys, I broke it. I'm sorry. Yeah. He kind of looks like he's asking her to pull his finger. (laughs) I'm going to take a screenshot because his face is amazing. (laughs) I got it. Thank you. So, anyway, Candle Obscura is really cool, guys. And uh, you should (laughs) do it if you can. Yeah. Uh, One shots are fun, one shots are great. Mm-hmm. Yep, meow, yep, yep. How's the gameplay mechanic? It seems intimidating. It's not. Though. It's super easy. But you made one of the super one of the simplest simple, ones Joe has ever seen. Yeah. This is totally getting recorded, and he's gonna he's gonna see it back, and he's gonna be like, "Come on." Guys. <laughs> <laughs> So everyone excited for the Super Bowl? No. <laughs> All the bad guys are playing. Um, it's Red uh, versus Red Taylor's version. Okay. Yeah. And I'm going yeah. to wear an NFL a shirt that has like the NFL logo and it says Taylor's version. So. Excellent. I like that. Mm-hmm. I can get into that. I was just really sad that Detroit didn't win. Uh, okay, I think we're back. Sorry about that, gang. Uh, back. What a, Don't worry, what a... we handled it all. Thank you. Did you just do all the announcements? Yep. Perfect. Uh, we just kind of rehashed the ones you've already done. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Great, great, great. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, so uh, we are doing... Uh, sorry about that. Um, 
we are doing our one shots uh, every Saturday and Sunday, except for the 17th. Um, and I believe uh, this week we have Saturday is the Rite of Chakur. So it is a level 12 pit fight in the realms of the, uh, of the, uh, 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 uh essentially like a gladiatorial sort of like uh arena called uh the chakur um which is in hasamal by the way gang uh so a little place mm. that is somewhere not really close to you at all but it is in north Emea. you are aware of it um uh yeah so if you uh want to play on that saturday and then sunday i believe we we're doing um uh, the Golden Lion heist, uh, which was playtested with these fools. Um, we did it as a Silver Bear heist, essentially the same thing, but a very cool little uh, uh, somewhat Ocean's Eleven-esque little wacky uh, caper. Um, this was really fun. So if you uh, are wanting to check that out, uh, please uh, please do that. Um, uh, you can do so, uh, obviously, with joining the uh, link that is, as I said before, in the video description, but I'm also going to put... Uh, the link here for all our upcoming games. Uh, uh, and then last, that's right, I don't have Instagram on that. Uh, so then uh, lastly on that, uh, this is, uh, if you're watching and you would like to support the channel, the best way to do so would be to subscribe uh, uh, the uh, with the YouTube, with YouTube or Twitch, whatever you're on, um, to feed the almighty uh, gods of YouTube and just make us... Uh, be seen by more people hopefully and with that uh allowing us to be able to kind of do some fun things with like maybe some free one shots every once in a while um and uh some other stuff possibly down the line but we need to get there first uh so if you want to do that that would uh that's relatively free for you it takes time so there's there's that it takes energy so it's not completely free but either way we appreciate it um and then lastly, uh, checking out our social media stuff. Uh, so putting in our link tree here uh, that has the access to all our Instagram and TikTok, TikToky talks, and uh, also our YouTube and Twitch. Uh, so, uh, and I believe that is it. So before we jump into tonight, we need to get a recap of where we left off. So, Lorianne, if you do the honors. <laughs> yes. Um, so, Saren. Uh, came out um, from talking with Huxley and told us all that Alistair's group has a rod of destruction and um, who Eldrin had just talked to the day before or that night. I don't know. Um, and Huxley told us to Saren. And at that moment, Brumhilda comes into the room after waking up um, and we fill her in on what's been happening while she's sleeping. Um, Eldrin tells her about Ar Alistair and Erisgard, um, and also tells on the group for, for using the sending room, even though she didn't think it was safe. And Brumhilda actually agreed with me uh, in my paranoia, so I was vindicated. Um, Brumhilda casts some version of Time Stop to fix the sending room. Um, so she basically she says, I've done everything I can to secure it if anyone's listening in and they're just super powerful and that's what's going to happen. Um, we can tell that Fern Hilda is not a completely herself still because she does end up yelling at Wilbur when Wilbur tells her that he's worried about her and Fern Hilda never yells at Wilbur. He, she has a soft spot for him. So um, at that, um, Guar tries to take the, um, that anger away from Wilbur or towards Wilbur and admits that he gave her tea that put her to sleep which um, does not go over well. Brimhilda demands that he come outside with her so that they can talk. And she then proceeds to turn him into a spider and sternly talk to talk at him. She didn't yell. And she just basically tells him that um, she is in control of herself. And if he ever takes that away from her again, he will stay like this. So Brimhilda comes back, gives off some weird magic energy. Like it's some sort of electricity or something pulsing from her. And for Wilbur, it's something that feels different from anything he's ever felt before. So um, she ends up going um, upstairs to her library to do some research. And um, on the way there, Milo, in typical Milo fashion, stops her and tells her that she's doing well and a great job and that he's very thankful. Um, and then Milo is able to use one of his abilities, Know Your Truth, to, um, and he figures out that Brimhilda is scared of herself and not 100% in control. 
So that's all foreshadowing. Uh, and then <laughs> the group, <laughs> the group discusses if Brumhilda maybe killed Guar, um, but the house Marvin assures us that nah, she wouldn't. So then the group decides, you know, Guar's probably fine. So they start discussing genitalia and, you know, if Tritons are different and what other dicks look like. So we didn't get too far there, but, you know, there's some things that we need to investigate. Um, Spider, <laughs> Spider Guar goes on um, some adventures. Um, and he tries to make a web and he is there's a bird that flies overhead and he just you know is learning how to live his spider life um so later on um so eldrin then decides to go reach out to her dad because she has a list that she still needs to finish for um getting allies against tall um so they discuss everything that's been happening with Tall and the Shadowfell. They, we learn a couple of things like Zaris, there's something weird going on with him, probably related to him aging um, while in the Shadowfell. But we also talk about the Aarakocrans. They have not reached out to him yet. So um, she tells him that she'll reach out again tomorrow so that they can discuss some things further um, once he's had a chance to talk to the council. Um, Spider Guar then has to fight for his life um, against a giant rodent that bites him and then he's transformed back to his human half elf form um and then um in between that eldrin reaches out to huxley and um that gave us a huge lore dump on um ray lore ray lore get it <laughs> um anyway uh so eldrin asks um about ray lore who used to be theron's lover and was Huxley's at some point and I don't know went bad or something like that but um it, it was a very sad conversation and made us all feel really bad for Huxley because he's kind of heartbroken um so he gives some good information on um I just have a ton here um on what Raylor and he were working on um they were working on some sort of um um using magic and also Huxley's ability to create machines and things like that. They were pulling those together and making devices that, for example, a, he a machine th that had healing spells infused in it, or um, Raylor was working on a device that could bring Huxley's arm back. Um, so some interesting things that in the wrong hands could be very bad. Um, and then Wilbur is losing his fur, um, which leads Saren to take him to Brimhilda because he's starting to feel disoriented and, um, things are starting to look really weird to Wilbur. Like, for example, Brimhilda looks like an angel and Wilbur has developed a headache, is disoriented and, um, even hears Brimhilda speak in a different voice than what, um, Saren is hearing. So... Wilbur starts even taking damage from what's going on, and uh, but doesn't seem to feel any pain from it, is just fixated on Brunhilda. So uh, Saren wants Eldrin to come help to see if she can heal uh, Wilbur, but Brunhilda is not happy about that and says that she can figure it out, <laughs> accidentally throws Saren against a wall, <laughs> um, which is the best way to figure things out. <laughs> um, and it kind of leads into a scuffle uh, with... Um, Eldrin's able to get into the room, so it leads to a scuffle with Eldrin, Saren, and Brimhilda. Um, and ultimately, Eldrin is able to cast Remove Curse on Wilbur. Um, and it leads to a weird moment where Eldrin, like, time kind of stops for, or slows down for everyone but Eldrin. And she realizes that she has an opportunity to or take care of Brimhilda. And at first, Eldrin chose um, anger. And um, so is it seems like Eldrin is going to hurt Brimhilda or maybe even kill her. But then at the end, at the end, uh, Eldrin ends up choosing an understanding path, which brings her back to the grove with a child Brimhilda, where she talks to her and promises basically that they make an agreement that Eldrin will kill her if it's necessary. But um, Eldrin also makes it clear that she deserves love and protection and all that stuff. Um, and then the house is falling apart all around us. Uh, Guar realizes that um, a connection between Tall and this sickness that Wilbur had, um, and that this um, that Tall's presence caused those around him to become sick. And it was very similar to what happened with Brimhilda today. Uh, the thing that helped Guar with this was distance. Um, 
And the terrifying thing is that Tal did it on purpose, but Brumhilda did not. So um, this is very scary. So Guar works uh, using haste to get everyone out of the house, but unfortunately he is unable to get himself and Brumhilda out, and the house collapsed with him inside. Okay. Very nice. Uh, I will say above board, the time when you were explaining what Brumhilda did to Guar, it was the first, I think it was the first time of like recognizing an NPC that I control uh, doing something where I was like, I don't know if that was like, if that like came across good enough. And then hearing you retell it or like, damn, that's, that's. <laughs> fucked up um uh so how uh, i feel yeah 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 so sorry spider about that quar, spider quar. yeah does whatever you... a spider does <laughs> which isn't a lot we found out <laughs> <laughs> um cool well with that uh everybody roll initiative please that is a natural 20 great for what? Uh, 20. Cool. <laughs> Love it. 30, 20. Um, a natural one for two for me, and then uh, Noros has a... God, what is this? 15, 16, 18 for Noros. 18 for Noros, okay. Uh, seven for Milo. Okay. 21 for Wilbur. All right. Um, he did Gerard, or is he just there? Uh, not for this. I'm gonna say. Oh. Uh, I'll say you can use Gerard in your turn if you'd like. Um, so here's what I will say for this. Obviously, uh, Saren, you're gonna have the higher decks, but I'm gonna say Nat twenty uh, will allow Guar to go first in this. So Guar, uh, give me uh, first off, give me a Constitution saving throw. Oh, I forgot uh, to mention too. We we still need to resolve uh, Milo's nat twenty for his perception on that book. That's right. Mm -hmm. The book from Hilda threw it in. The book that hit him in the head. Hit him in the face. I completely forgot about that. Um, that is a sixteen in my con save. Uh, Milo, where are you in the initiative? Seven. So okay. right Almost before left. Wilbur, I think, right? Or no, right before Eldrin. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. That does change things up a bit. I completely forgot about that. Um, okay. Uh, what'd you get on your uh, concept, Mike? 16. 16. Okay, cool. Uh, with a 16, uh, you are sputtering, coughing. You have uh, uh, giant pieces of furniture uh, all around, like, uh, it's nighttime, so it's dark out, but you're also in a space where you're unable to see anything. Uh, there's a moment that you, uh, possibly kind of like lost consciousness for a second and it's just kind of coming sure. to here. Sure. Um, uh, but you are not, uh, you are not currently dealing with any, uh, any levels of exhaustion just yet um, as you wake up and uh, are trying to kind of move your body around. Okay. That's your turn. What would you like to do? Yep. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is to do my best to get my bearings. What is on me? What, how much is on me? Is, I, it, can I get it off? Can I crawl out? Uh, I'll say, give me a, Give me a perception check with disadvantage. Okay. Uh, that is a... That's a nine. Cool. You are not entirely sure. You can't really see anything at this point. Um, all you see is black. You do get the feeling... You feel pain, so you know that you're alive. Um, and uh, there's... Uh, I would say um, in the clutter of everything happening, you're still hearing like things kind of falling around you in this moment, but you are pretty sure you can hear the sound of crickets too, which tells you that you are still on this plane. 
okay. um, but you cannot see or or get any sort of bearings around where you are right now. Uh, first thing I do is I, I uh, call to Broomhilda. Okay. You're, you're under a house. You're uh-huh. under a pile of house. Uh-huh. Um, okay, cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, you do not get a response. Okay. Fuck! I just start trying to push things off of me and see how much space I have to move around. Yeah, give me an athletics check. Okay. Okay, that was better. Uh, 28. 28, nice. Uh, with a 28, um, uh, that's pretty dang good. Um... For the natural 19. Cool. Uh, I'm going to say with a 28, you are able to uh, bust an arm through and get basically your your arm, your shoulder, and like part of your face. You can now see the night sky. Okay. Um, that was your <laughs> uh, that was your action. Unless there's any bonus action stuff, we'll we'll move on. Let me check. Let's see if I have any bonus actions that would be helpful here. Um... I mean, I have Misty Step. I mean... You can now see the outside. Yeah, I'm going to Misty Step out of the rubble. Cool, you got it. Uh, Misty Step, this is a weird... Uh, but, I mean, it's D&D. You always got to check this. Um, does Misty Step say up to 30 feet? Or, th- yep, it says up to 30 feet. Great. Up to. Mm-hmm. So, great, yeah. Uh, bonus action, you are... Pff- you are out on top of the rubble um, as you see uh, as you see everyone around you seemingly okay, uh, safe. There's a possibility that some of them, are, some of you guys, are actually in the temple at this point. Um, I would say, like in the realms of like kind of starting this initiative, a lot of you could be like in the doorway, like kind of like like in your way of like coming out and trying to see what's going on. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, Guar, you uh, you still have your movement now at this point. Um, I'm, I don't know if I'm moving cause I'm just like on the ground, like on, on my like hands and knees, just coughing. Yeah. Um, and I can't see anything, right? It's still dark out. So, well, I mean, I mean, I have dark vision. You but... have dark vision. So basically what you see is this like, sort of like, um, uh, like, uh, a black and white sort of depiction of dim right. light of, uh, uh, a, uh, you don't see... Uh, um, just to kind of like clarify and get everybody sort of in position of the idea of what they're seeing. Um, you don't see like the feet of Marvin. Um, that's right. part of the spell. So that disappeared. Um, uh, what you do see is an entire house that th- there's no roof. There's nothing left but broken pieces of things. Um, uh, I'll say ca- uh, carrying the perception check, which was a nine, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, so yeah. carrying that perception check of the nine, what you do see is uh, also a ridiculous amount of materials all around. Everything that was in the house is also on the ground. Um, so you notice like uh, like a, a somewhat uh, somewhat rustier looking halberd. You see a uh, um, uh, you see a bunch of books uh, mm-hmm. that are on the ground. You see, yeah, um, it is it is a full hurricane of a mess right uh once Gwar's done coughing i mean i'm, I'm gonna look up and, and try to see where my friends are cool i'd say the nine you can see uh uh whoever would be in the window but i'd say that's that's kind of that's kind of it eldrin and milo were the ones that he threw out of the house before he got trapped so like cool. wilbur and saren are in the temple Great. So yeah, you see Eldrin and Milo uh, okay. on the ground getting up. So having seen that everybody's safe, Guar's gonna immediately get up and book it back to the rubble and start just pulling stuff. And I'm gonna yell, "Stay there!" And I just oh. start going yeah. nuts. Uh, so you you run through trying to kind of sift through, uh, yeah. pulling pieces of boards up and whatnot. Um, you. Uh, 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 Role play wise is what you're doing. Mechanically speaking, uh, you won't be able to do any sort of checks on that until your next turn. That's fine. Um, so, uh, great. Uh, Saren, I believe. 
Um, I feel like Saren wouldn't be very far into the temple, so she's gonna go outside and, uh, not listen to Guar's stay back. Um, and she's immediately trying to search the rubble for, for, uh, Brumhilda. Cool. Awesome. Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to ask you this. Uh, where is Saren's mindset right now? Do you think Saren is of, uh, do you think Saren is fully of, I'm trying to think of a good way to say this. Uh, is Saren fully of sound mind here? Um, do you think Saren is under control of them, of herself? Somewhat. Um, like, she's definitely pissed at Broomhilda for, one, throwing her across the room, but not even so much that as not listening when she said Eldrin can help. Um, but she knows that they need her no matter what. Um, so it's just like, Gwar's, she sees Gwar's okay, find Broomhilda. Cool. It's just okay. like yeah, her only awesome. mindset. Uh, I'm going to say in in that case, uh, we know the object that you're going towards. Uh, so this is uh, this is actually, um, well, I'll tell you in a, in a minute. Uh, give me a perception check with disadvantage. Uh, 22. 22. Uh, with a 22, uh, you are looking around um, uh, before kind of reaching into anything. And uh, besides seeing everything that was described before, various books, weaponry, shield. I think you see the tower shield, like kind of like just like fully flipped upside down. Um, you see there's a uh, the uh, war table was like cracked in half down the middle. Um, uh, papers, books. Uh, there's various like slight popping sounds from like small magical objects that were that were probably uh around and now like misfiring um uh uh but as far as like having to go into the rubble to like look for Brumhilda it would be a slightly different check um so is that what you want to do no i have an, another cool. idea um it. she's going to get out her rope of climbing and uh, if she has even, like, a slight idea, I know she can't see Broomhilda yet, but if there's, like, a pile of rubble that maybe has a little more books in it than the rest of it, like, she's going to just hope that's, like, where the library crashed down. And she is going to speak the command word to start to send that rope in the direction of where she hopes the library is. Great. I love that. Um, okay. I'm going to say uh, still give me an investigation check because the the item essentially that you're looking at is the house. Um, but uh, yeah, that's for that's definitely a lower DC because you're looking for just a plethora of books. Um, 28. 28. Nice. Uh, with a 28, you... Um, 28 is pretty good. I will say this. Saren, as you are looking around, you have dark vision, right? So so as you're looking around, you do see uh, that there are uh, some, uh, there's a, uh, a, a pile of rubble where you can see that some of the, like, uh, there's some, like, covers that seem to have been, like, torn off. Um, uh, uh, various sort of like uh, you see books that are essentially kind of in disarray in a certain area a little bit like as far uh, I'd say probably about, about 30 feet from you I think um, you notice that one of the books is open uh, and like it's a weird sort of thing of like in a in this moment of trying to fly through and do everything um, I think there's a, like, there's weird things that sometimes you can, like, uh, get attached to and focusing on. Um, you see that one of the books is open, and you can clearly see the writing in it. 
Uh, with a 28, you recognize... Uh, with a 28, I don't know if you recognize, if Saren recognizes on this, but you see... You see that you can clearly see the book and a portion of light around the book. Okay. That's where she's sending the rope then. You got it. Cool. You uh, send the rope in. Um, I will. Uh... So this this rope of climbing, I'm speaking the command word to send it into uh, to move towards a destination you choose. So essentially mm -hmm. you're like, here's a hole, go down that hole. Yeah. Got it. Cool. Awesome. I love that. And it uh, does it does technically say ten feet on your turn when you first command it and ten on each of your turns after that. Cool. I'll say if you want to but move it's... the thirty feet to it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she'll move as close as possible. Um Okay, you hold it as an action, then it is a bonus action. It's moving ten feet at least. So I'll say, uh, you know, this is this is somewhat of a, a weird. So we won't, we won't, I won't, I won't worry too much about like semant that. I, I feel like that part's a little bit semantics on there. I'll say, yeah. t spending your action to do that, totally fine. That works. Cool. Um, unless you want to do it by the book, we can do that too. That's fine. Okay. Cool. Uh, great. Um, as you step into the light. Um, you send your uh, you send your uh, rope down into the hole that is there um, and uh, uh, you don't feel any tug or anything just yet and she's um, gonna yell out for Brumhilda to grab the rope okay if you can hear me you got it um, okay uh, who's next so that was a that was a dirty twenty, I believe it was Noros. Yeah, he had eighteen. I, I'll put it this way. Um, you skipped Wilbur. Oh, Wilbur. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, is Wilbur like conscious? I don't remember what condition he was left in. Uh, good question. Uh, so Wilbur, you are probably pretty. You're conscious. You're you're yeah. still in a state of like. Uh, probably shock, um, like trying to kind of get your bearings, get your surroundings. I believe you are in the um, temple. Does he feel pain? The pain now from all that damage he took, like the oh, residual. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it all comes kind of flooding in at that point, um, as you feel that you are. Uh, 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 we'll say, uh, what's your hit points at? Um, eighty-seven. Okay. Uh, Mine too, twinsies. Yeah, you feel uh, you feel some pain, but uh, you're conscious and you're alive. Um, I'll say if you want to uh, roll anything to kind of get a bearing on your surroundings, you certainly can. Or if you think that you uh, do me a favor, roll me a roll me a, uh, just a straight intelligence check. So that's just a d20 and adding your intelligence modifier. Um, 16. 16. Okay, great. That's good. Uh, yeah, with a 16, uh, memory of everything that has happened comes flooding back in a very quick succession. You kind of like feel like yourself almost physically kind of like double over uh, from that and the influx of pain that you've received. Um, but uh, you're also aware that the house must have collapsed behind you. Um, I think Wilbur would be hyperventilating, um, just like complete shock and trying to like, if I'm assuming Eldrin is like within like view of Wilbur. Um, so he would like be trying to ask Eldrin, did everyone get out? I'll allow you to do that as a free action, and Eldrin, you can respond. Um, so do I see, I see Guar, but I don't see Brumhilda, right? Do you think that you're in a position, like, near the doorway, or if this place has windows? 
Like, do you good, mean that's the... actually good to know. Does this temple have windows? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay so yeah, so we'll say. As I want, it says. Right. That's right. Yeah. This is truly yeah. like, what are we saying? Uh, yeah. yeah. So I think in that case, uh, I'll, I'll say we, we want to have probably a, a roll to it. There's a low DC. Go ahead and roll me a perception check. I'm not in the uh, temple. Yeah. She's outside. Oh, that's right. You're outside. Um, yeah. So you're calling. I'm sorry. Uh, you're calling out to Eldrin. Um, and this Eldrin, you look around, you see uh, everybody here except for Brumhilda. And you hear, you heard Guar like kind of yelling mm -hmm. for Guar and Saren. Yeah. Um. I would yell back to Wilbur that um, Guar is fine, but we need to find Grimhilda, and to stay there. I'll and I'll, I'll, I would start making my way to Wilbur to heal him, but I'll do cool. that on my turn. You go. Uh, so Wilbur, you see uh, Eldrin kind of moving towards you, towards the temple, as you hear that they have not found Grimhilda. Uh, <laughs> I think Wilbur would try to stand. Uh, like on his little feet and try to just push his way past be like no there's no time we have to find her okay you got it uh, so say for the sake of role play purposes Eldrin you come forward Wilbur you try to kind of just push right through um, Wilbur give me a perception check uh, 20 not natural cool uh, and I apologize because it'd be for the same reasons, especially for Wilbur. There's no question of this. Roll with disadvantage. I apologize. Eleven. Okay. Uh, with an eleven, looking around, you can kind of feel like uh, there's a there's a moment as you step outside of the temple and into the night. You actually feel this like you feel the air around you. Uh, like kind of like hit you all at once just like the pain and everything else you feel that it's like oh it's cold out and there's a um, so your senses are in this like weird sort of like adrenaline spike um, and your vision kind of just blurs a little bit for a second um, as you uh, continue forward um, uh, what would you like to do? Um, Wilbur's going to keep pushing forward even if that means he has to get on all fours and like crawl Uh, okay, cool. Uh, Wilbur, you actually have something that could be very useful here. Uh, it is in your, uh, racial traits. Mm. So. Nope, hold on. The ND Beyond's freaking out at me. Just make sure I can find it here. I wonder if I'm thinking of the same thing you're thinking of, Jeff. Well, technically, there's two things. And I also wonder if you're thinking what I'm thinking about what you're thinking. <laughs> Definitely not thinking what you're thinking. How do you know? I think you, you know. Because I know what you're thinking, and I'm not thinking that. Ah. What? You think you know, but you have no idea. <laughs> Kayla, are you thinking things? I'm not thinking anything. Uh, sorry, it would be in your notes because we couldn't have your featured interest. I should fix that race at some point. Um, but uh, yeah, you, there's a couple things here, but natural sprinters is what I'm saying. Oh, I was thinking nature. Yeah, I just, I don't know if... I was thinking dig. Yeah. I was that thinking was the other part. You do, you do have a, uh, a, a burrow speed. Yeah. But I feel like I don't know if I don't know if he would be sprinting right now. He's pretty hurt. Okay, that's fair. I think for the sake of role play, as hurt as he is, he would not be sprinting. This is meant to be like Wilbur's obviously not okay. I'm just trying to get there. Cool. I'll say if you want to spend your turn just basically kind of like running towards the pile and just starting to kind of like just move through uh, from a pile that is uh, uh, it could even be the pile that Guar just came out of like you're just in, a, in that mo in that mode so to speak yep okay you got it uh, cool uh, Miley you got a 7 Algen what did you get 2 Uh, what's Nora's up to? Uh, so Nora's. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Specific for Nora's. Um, the only I thing I would say, Nora's can go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. 
I was thinking he would go and try and stop Wilbur because he sees how hurt he is and knows Eldrin can help him. If we and say, we... I think it's it's funny because Wilbur will be mad that Norris is trying to stop him. <laughs> right. Right. Cool. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I say making that making that point to do that. I would like you to also roll a perception check for uh, Noros for me, please. Oh, he has plus seven, guys. It's not as good uh, as me, but still. I okay. So here's a question before you roll, <laughs> or tell me what you rolled. Okay. Um, the thirteen. What? <laughs> I was saying, don't don't tell me yet. Oh, I, you um, said tell me what you rolled. I thought I'm sorry. Well, thir- I mean thirteen. Uh, so, but I will ask this anyways. Do you think Noros is, uh, like I like I asked for Saren? Do you think Noros is of sound mind? Do you think Noros is fully with it? Um, I think he is, but I think he's confused because he was back behind everyone, so he was he never even got into the room. So I think it's more confusion of still not understanding what the hell is happening and what was going on. Because Eldrum is hurt too. Uh, Brinkhilda right. hurt her as well. So I think he's in his right mind enough, if that makes sense. Yes, absolutely. Uh, okay, you got it. Um, so trying to kind of pull uh, Wilbur back, I, I don't think we need to roll anything specific for that. Um, uh, okay. Uh, Milo, roll me a perception check with advantage. Okay. Uh, 25. Uh, that was the DC for everyone else. For you, it was a lot lower anyways. Milo, roll me a wisdom save. Uh, 17. Okay. The 17 and that 25 that you see, going from the the realm of what Saren saw with the idea of the light shining on the book and the surrounding area, Saren was full on paying attention to one thing and one thing only and moving past all that and and sending in that rope of climbing. Um, So from the camera's view, that's what we saw. Milo, as you turn and look, you see that the clouds are starting to part in the night sky, and the light that you're seeing is a full moon. Mm. First round, you feel your, your body starting to take shape and change, but you are still of sound mind in this moment. What do you do? Um, Milo, Milo's going to. I'm, all right, now I'm argu- now I'm fighting with myself. Would he have his bag? Um, So you roll for it. Yeah. That's how I decided. Yeah. All right. Odds were he has his bag. He cool. eats his dinner on the steps with his satchel next to him. <laughs> I think <laughs> you like full. You full like Hobbit. I'm going on an adventure. When that yeah. whole thing happened, you like grabbed your bag and like was just yeah. running as fast as a Hobbit could. As Guar grabbed you and was like, "No, just go." <laughs> My handkerchief. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so he has his bag. Uh, his first reaction is to reach in his bag and um, and grab the bloodstone um, that he has and uh, okay. and hold on to that and kind of focus his efforts on like just staying present, like staying here. I love that. So, so what I will say in this is that the the only thing here, and this is something that you wouldn't necessarily know, but the uh, the uh, werewolves of uh, uh, the Venrona village have been trained to be able to use the bloodstone to be able to keep themselves uh, mm-hmm. aware. So, I mean, it makes sense. Uh, I need to make this a challenge, and uh, but not definitely not impossible. Um, your uh, 
this is a full realm of like recognizing who you are and who you choose not to be i think you know as uh, not in the idea of like you choosing not to be a werewolf it's you choosing not to turn on your friends mm-hmm. um so i'm gonna tell you what the dc is but you have advantage on this okay. uh it is uh so it's gonna be the know your truth mm-hmm. dc's 20. Ooh. Um, I know your truth is a plus seven mm-hmm. and my first roll was a 13 okay and, uh, <laughs> meet the DC incredible um, amazing you feel as your um, you tell me what you feel you're still transforming that's still happening. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, g- give me that word picture. Um, so yeah, Milo uh, Milo feels that feeling. Um, I think combined with the with the full moon, it feels really similar to when um, Eldrin and her mom were grieving um, in that moment where he didn't he couldn't control his his turn. He just it was full emotion, full everything. Um, and so Milo recognized that, like, that feeling creeping up the back of his neck and uh, saw the moon and his, immediately went back to um, in the family when he received the bloodstone and he grabbed it. And, and as, like, a last ditch effort of kind of, and I think in this moment, he's uh, he's just kind of chanting to himself for like praying whatever and saying stay stay here stay here stay here you're not it's not helpful if you if you let if you let yourself go um saying that out loud while kind of in his mind like Warren do you know how to use this thing do you do you know what this like do you know what's going on here um but uh yeah I think that's all kind of in that six seconds, that's all kind of happening real quick for him. You got it. Um, as you are saying, stay here, you can feel, you can feel your, your chest starting to expand, your legs breaking out. It's still painful going through Mm -hmm. this transformation and uh as you feel your body start to grow hair all over and um your eyes start to become uh more bloodshot your your nose and your mouth start to extend out in front of you um you are uh as you are possibly uh, do you think you're you're saying stay here or you're thinking stay here I think um, I think he is saying "stay here" out loud. Cool. Um, as you are saying that, you can feel the uh, which. This... Go ahead. I. He's saying "stay here" out loud, repeating Guar's command of "stay there," um, and so he's like the only thing he's heard is "stay here, stay here." Okay, I love that. Uh, cool. Um, as you are, as you are saying this, you can actually feel even like, so your, uh, like part of your internal organs, your muscles start to bulge, things like that. You actually feel your, um, uh, your vocal cords start to change, get more rigid as you hear your own voice getting raspier and darker and deeper, um, as it changes from that normal Milo stay here to this, this almost growl of, uh, stay here. Uh, but you are able to stay where you are. Um, uh, uh, for everybody on their turn, you are seeing a full grown werewolf. Once it hits your turn, um, that is, uh, clutching the stone that is now glowing a very bright red. Um, uh, uh, as uh, you all can kind of make your own sort of uh, clue of whether or not your character would, would believe that Milo is safe to be around. Um, 
and feel free to roll if you would like to. Uh, um, but amazing. I do think, uh, I know Jamie stepped away, but I do think that is Milo's full turn in doing that. Um, but incredible. Amazing. Sorry, I was looking I was looking for my wolf mask, but I don't know what, where it went. Oh. <laughs> ah. um, so I will say with that, because that's awesome, but I would say object interaction, transformation, that would be a full round of doing yeah, that. that makes um, sense. So, yeah, cool. Um, all right, I am going to roll for Brumhilda. Okay. Um, uh, Brumhilda is not responding wherever she is. Uh, uh, is that... Oh, sorry. Eldrin, you're up. Mm -hmm. um, so, I'm near Milo and see this happening. Um, oh God, sorry. I have to close my door because the dog's being really annoying. You're okay. Um, so I see this, um, but like, uh, Jamie said, I have seen him transform before, um, when we were in Anoria and he didn't mm -hmm. attack. Um, but I've also seen him transform and attack. So, um, right. I look at Milo and I say, are you good? Uh, yeah. Okay. Think. Good, I have enough things to worry about. And then I <laughs> <laughs> leave Milo and go towards Wilbur. Um, and can I see Guar too? Yes, you can. Okay. Um, I Can I position myself some within 30 feet of both Wilbur and Guar? Yes, absolutely. Okay. I cast um, Mass Cure Wounds on... Because um, Guar... Wait, Saren is hurt too, right? Only a little bit. A couple of okay. points. Okay. Okay. So I can do it to six creatures. Um, did Milo get hurt? Okay. Um, so, I mean, I'll give it to you, Saren, because might as well. That's fine. Um, so I do Mass Cure Wounds on me, Wilbur, Guar, Saren, and... Um, do I have to see them? I was, uh, say, I, was just, I, I was just looking at that. Uh, roll me... So you do not need to see them, but roll me... So I me could a hit Brimhilda too. Right. right. Roll me a d20 to see if Brumhilda is within the 30-foot sphere. 10. 10 beats a DC? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me do this real quick. Mask your wounds. Uh, is, uh, 23 hit points. Incredible. Um... This, uh, you can act on this on your turns, uh, but uh, I'll say everybody roll me a perception check right now. Uh, including Eldrin, you can also roll. 27 for Eldrin. Jesus. 20, 26. Okay, cool. Uh, 19. Yeah, keep going. 19. 22. 22. Milo's shaking his head. 21. 21. Oh, yeah, great. Uh, cool. You all beat the DC, so I'm just going to say that maybe it's more gasping than breathing. Uh, you hear Brumhilda. Look uh, at me saving lives. You, you knocked her out of... Uh, you knocked her back to consciousness um, uh, as she was unconscious. Um, uh, amazing. Uh, anything else on your turn, Eldra? Um, no, that's all I, uh, yeah, that's all I do. Um, and I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm over near Wilbur, just making sure he's okay. Okay. You got it. Uh, I'll say you, you can, uh, obviously, uh, reaction to talk if you're trying to say anything to Wilbur in this moment. Yeah, um, I, so I do ask, I say, um, are you okay, Wilbur? You were cursed. Do you? Do you still feel any effects? Um, I mean, I, I, I feel a little bit better, but I just, I don't quite feel like myself still. I don't know. Okay. Well, we're going to figure everything out somehow. 
uh, in a beautiful point going back to the top of the order. Uh, technically speaking, you guys are both rolling a 20 and it's very, very easy from here on out hearing a conscious and able to respond from Hilda. So, um, uh, uh, Guar, you hear, uh, from Hilda is responding closer to where Saren is. Um, uh, uh, you hear just coughing and sputtering. It doesn't, um, I say roll me, uh, say both of you roll me an insight check. That was me, right? Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, both okay. 18 for me. 18? Uh, nat 20 for a 32. 32? Cool. Amazing. Um, uh, you said 18, Guar? Yeah. Okay. Uh, with an 18... With an 18, what you hear in... From Hilda coughing and probably not saying any words just yet, but eventually probably would. Um, you don't hear that weird sort of like double speak of the like two voices um, of that like weird sort of uh, uh, ethereal sort of sound that kind of came out. Um, uh, you are pretty sure from Hilda is. Uh, not of that, I mean, in your view, spell or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, uh, whatever happened does not seem like it was most, uh, just, it seems like it was temporary. Uh, yeah. Saren with a 32, you know. <laughs> That's the only thing I'm sorry that I can give you on that. Actually, what did I have you roll? Insight? Yeah. yeah. Cool. <clears throat> uh, I'll give you this. Uh, with a 32, Saren, roll me a perception check. Twenty-five. Okay, cool. So not having to spend a lot of like time and energy, really, like having to perceive uh, where Brumhilda is for one, and whether or not Brumhilda is safe from herself. Um, however, we want to kind of view that in our own character sort of brain. You, you, you feel pretty confident in that, and it gives you a second to be able to uh, like both say, you know, like tug on the rope or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. But it also gives you a second to kind of just give a quick look around as you see Milo is turning into a werewolf um, and you see the moon and then you take a quick look around, I think maybe possibly based on like the first time you saw Milo uh, change where just like wolves seem to just start to gather from nowhere. Um, with a 25... What you see is not wolves. And it seems like it's there and then it's gone. There is four little motes of green light that seem to be floating about maybe, maybe 200 feet off from where you currently are at, kind of through the trees. Uh, Character wise, there's a, I mean, a lot of stuff has happened. It would make sense for Saren to be like, I don't even know if I actually saw it as it just disappeared with a 25. You know, the player knows that you saw something. Okay. Um, I think she just sees that and says that it sees that looks at Milo and just, Oh God, that's going to have to wait. And then, just yells for Brumhilda, grab the rope, Guar, help me. Whatever was happening, she's, I think she's fine again, but we got to get her out. Yeah. So, Saren, you spend time doing that. Guar, what are you doing um, in this case? This is a moment of RP and not uh, necessarily action, bonus action. Right. I think at that point, um, Guar is, you know, he's just going. He's not, he has no idea. Milo's turning into a werewolf. He is only focused on getting Broomhilda out. So he's just, and then he sees, uh, I, I see Saren, uh, book it toward a very specific location. I'm also pissed because I said, stay back. And of course she didn't. So right. I'm going to head beeline over to her, um, as fast as Guar can go. And, and haste is still going, right? Um, uh, I'd say it's a minute long 
Give me a concentration check. Let's find out. Actually, I'm glad you mentioned that. Concentration. Uh, this would be a uh, constitution saving throw. Got it. You know what? You know what? It's it's up. It's up. It works. Because otherwise, it's not as cool that you have to spend an entire turn just like stuck. Um, right. So I would I'm like, you know, f flash over to Sarah. I said, get back. And then I start just like digging like i don't know theoretically maybe almost as fast as uh wilbur can because mm -hmm. i got haste going and just ye oh, the entire time just yelling grab the rope uh saren you feel a tug on the rope she's she's gonna pull on it and say guar help me out i said get back and i and i grab the rope <laughs> from her you uh pull the rope in and after one full kind of like length of rope pulling in, you see a hand. <laughs> what? Oh, God. <laughs> I love it. All right. Uh, after one uh, one full like kind of like tug like, like collecting the uh, the rope as you um, you see a hand holding on clutching in uh, coming through that pile um, you can see in this moment you see scars on the, or not scars excuse me like cuts on the hand. Uh, like slowing down this moment in time. Uh, Saren, you continue. You're also pulling. So I think, you know, Guar is... Go ahead. I think at this point, um, like, because Guar tried to grab it from her and said, get back. I think she lets him grab it because she knows that she can just stand back and at this point she's just gonna speak the command word and she le she's letting him do his thing but it's fully moving like because she's you know saying rope I love elvish that. i love that so much like fine uh, go ahead but as long as i'm between you and her that's all i care about yeah mm -hmm. but guar is fully unaware um, of course yeah uh, that's 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 such a great like yeah okay i'll let you have this moment as it's not going to matter anyways all i have to do is say um mm -hmm. yeah uh, cool. Yeah, you see that hand kind of like inch further as the rope seems to kind of pull um, by itself. I don't think why you recognize that. Um, what do you do? I immediately um, gr reach out to grab her hand. And then with my other hand, I'm like moving other pieces of debris out of the way so I can pull her out. Cool. As you do so, you push the other. Uh, you, you start pushing... Uh, like, uh, there's a, uh, I'll say in this moment, uh, you notice that there's a, there's, the hole is not necessarily big enough for her to be able to uh, go through as there is a large, uh, like, half of a bookcase uh, that's there. Um, Guar, you, I mean, uh, you full-on Sparta kick this thing as it, it just gets shoved uh, 10 feet back. Um, um, and the way is clear. Um, I let go of the rope. I, I, I pull her up and I, I just, I hold her. Give me a there's any role required here. Okay. That's why. Um, what does that mean? In this moment, you feel a, you see the blonde hair, um, you see, uh, you, you don't see her face, she's looking down either from, from anguish, pain, what have you, and, but Guar, you feel, uh, You feel her clutching onto you. 
and it's almost painful in this moment. Um, there's a... I think with that nat 20, there's a moment where you're... As she is desperately holding on, there is uh, a... There's a moment where right at about maybe the middle of your back, closer towards the closer towards the right shoulder. No, sorry, your left shoulder. You feel a slightest twinge of pain and you hear the sound of bending metal as she is she is holding on to you so hard that the fingertips push into the metal. You're not taking any HP damage. Right. But just, she is... Yeah, mm -hmm. go ahead. I just say... Uh, I, just, I just start whispering just as gently as Warren can. Uh, it's okay. I got you. I've got you. I've got you. You're all right. I got you. And then I lay hands on her uh, and I heal her for... You touch her knee again? Yep. <laughs> Obviously, where else would I touch her? Um, where is my... Uh, I'm, I'm trying to see my bank. How many hit points uh, does she need to be... Uh, like full? We'll say we'll, we'll call it an RP moment. So I'd say okay. uh, probably all of them. Like, yeah. Um, okay. I, I lay on hands and I restore her. Uh, in this moment, Quar, you feel your own body go slightly limp as the haste spell naturally wears off. And you're frozen. But that's okay, because she's frozen too in this moment. I'd like to do something that I think we never really have done before, I don't think. I want to cut from here. To an hour later. Unless there's anything important you guys want to do here. Because I think what would be what makes sense in the realms of the story that we have here. This is the point where that chapter just closes. Is there anything that you would, uh, you, uh, that Guar would like to do in this? Obviously, you're kind of, you're fr you're dealing with the the effects of the haste spell here. Yeah. I'd say the only thing you could do is probably talk. You, I, I don't even think you can necessarily move. So, I think once I know she's healed, I would just say. We gotta keep, or we gotta stop meeting like this. <laughs> Incredible. Um, She's blown the roof off. She collapsed the cave, and now the house. <laughs> uh, it's in this moment that you recognize two things. Uh, one, you still really haven't ever gotten her to laugh. Uh, she doesn't laugh here. Uh, she is full on sobbing. Um, so you still still dealing with that challenge in yeah. uh, two she is just not letting go um, but we're gonna Neither am I okay. we're gonna fade out from this scene and we're gonna pick it up roleplay wise an hour later during that time Guar you regain mobility um, and you are able to bring her into uh, uh, you're able to bring her into the temple uh, assuming Elgin allows I guess Okay. I probably have uh, to allow Milo again since he's like a whole different creature but I do uh, yeah in, the, in this case I was looking at the spell it, it, it doesn't necessarily oh because because Milo is a different creature yeah I guess so that makes sense um, so yeah, so you do the process of whatever you have to do. Milo, you are still a werewolf. Um, that is not going to go away until the full moon, uh, the full moon sets, essentially daytime. Um, uh, but, 
you assess and heal wounds, whatever needs to be done. Um, uh, it's a, essentially a, the it's essentially a short rest um, as you all are kind of gathering yourselves and just trying to kind of collect yourself from that. Um, uh, unless there's anything important you would like to do or say within that hour, I would say we're going to cut to an hour later. Which I think we fade into view a a scene of you all just in the temple. Um, Elgin, where is the... Uh, is there light in here, and where is it coming from? Um, yeah, there is... Um, it's a dim light, and um, it's just illuminated from, like... Um, there's, like, bioluminescent, like, things that you would see underwater, like at the top of this lake at the, on the ceiling. I love it. Uh, so the bioluminescence probably like a like bluish green, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, Saren, I think we start with you as you are looking up at that ceiling with that bluish green sort of light. and There's possibly a part of you where you're trying to kind of remember when you saw those lights maybe you just saw inside the temple as we cut to a view of Saren just looking up at the lights um, you were all I imagine in here um, as we kind of come to the scene and we'll go from there also just in case it comes up um, because I know Brimhilda is not a celestial anymore Eldrin made it so that celestials elementals Fake means and undead. None of them can come in here. Okay, so. cool. Love it. They can try, but then they have to roll and all that crap. Got it. Um, <laughs> great. Uh, yeah. Uh, I want to kind of get an idea of what you're all doing, but I want to start with like from Saren's perspective, from Saren's point of view. So, what is uh, what is Saren doing? right now and you could say just continuing to stare and just being in that like thousand yard sort of moment yeah i think she's staring up at that and i think maybe she remembers seeing some of these these bioluminescent lights uh when she fell through the floor of the anorian dungeon and was up against the creature that looked like Raylor dragging Falmos, mm -hmm. and maybe she saw some kind of off in the distance when she illuminated that with her flame. And that's okay. just where she's what she's lost in. Yeah, makes sense. Um, I think Noros, who has been trying to be as helpful as possible, um. I think just like, you know, doesn't like come too close. Uh, you guys have never really had much of an interaction. I think that's on purpose as he's like. No, uh, they, they did the vow thing together. The what? Where they went Wait. to, uh, Saren helped him with his, giving his vows. I stood watch while he went uh, in from there, the house. From, yes, yes. Yeah. 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 And that and that wasn't an awkward interaction at all. <laughs> no, um, no, not at all. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Yeah. Um, so so I say it by my point. Um, okay, yeah, you're uh, right, you're right. No, I was like, um, no, that one time when they were forced to hang out. <laughs> when they were yeah. forced to hang out. Um, yeah, I think there's just been like, um, uh, yeah, so just Norris come, kind of comes walking up to you and just goes, um, hey, uh, I know this is probably silly to ask, but we're kind of just doing rounds to just make sure that everybody's physically okay. Um, are you okay? Yeah, yeah, uh, physically, at least. If that's what you're asking. Um, yeah, I, I guess, uh, okay, cool. Um, do you, uh, I 
don't know how this temple really works, but um, do you need anything? Um, n- no, no, I guess I'm fine. There's a true silly moment here where Noros asking Saren, who is a like a woodland elf who has lived a very long time in full survival mode of like being able to fend for herself 100%. Uh, it, it like, it, it seems really silly for Norris to be asking, um, but mm-hmm. he's asking and that's, that's all he can do. Six. Uh, okay. Um, all right. Uh, yeah. All right. I'm going to go check on the others. She just lets him walk away thinking, like, I mean, I don't think you can do, like, Marvin Magical House stuff, so why, why? <laughs> right. Why are you asking me this right now? Yeah, I love that. Um, okay. Uh, I think we're gonna, we're gonna, I'd like to have war go last or if it makes sense it becomes part of the the sort of like thing here on that um but uh uh my milo uh why 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 low werewolf milo why low um what is uh don't ask how he's doing physically yeah, uh, Noros, uh, I think, yeah, from Noros' perspective, he looks around, looks at Milo, who is, like, possibly looking right at him, and just, like, just looks away. Uh, uh, what's uh, what's Milo been up to? Um, so I picture, I picture Milo's uh, current, current state as, like, high alert. Like, like, you had, like, you had food poisoning yesterday. Mm-hmm. And the feeling every time you eat something the day after of like, is this going to be it? Is it, is it happening again? Um, where he's just constantly assessing where he is and how he's, how he's acting. Um, and so I think a part of that he's probably he's he's going to find a place, um, like away a little bit close enough that he can hear people and and be like uh so i think i i picture him like genuinely sitting on the rafters like sitting in the rafters like in with the light with the like bioluminescence because he can't really see that well in dim light anyways okay. um so just sitting like sitting up there so he can still hear people talking and still still kind of be around but he isn't physically that close to anybody right now. Love it. Uh, so, uh, Algin, this uh, this symbol can be up to 120 feet on each side. Is that are you using that full amount? Um, I am not good at figuring out size, so I would have made it as big as it needed to be to fit all this comfortably. Cool. Way less than 120 then. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, so I imagine it's probably close to maybe like 60. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I think, Milo, you are kind of, I think you probably have choosing a corner of the room that no one's at. Mm-hmm. Um, but everyone's pretty close. Like, you're yeah. you're clearly within seeing distance. Enough that Noros kind of looks at you and goes, I can't. Nope, I can't do that. Nope. Uh, cool. Uh Seeing, uh, seeing Noros, like, be almost physically repulsed by, like, by Milo, like, just kind of probably more triggered than anything, Mm -hmm. um, Milo's going to, like, Milo's going to, like, maintain eye contact and, Noros, how are you? I can't right now, man. I can't. I'm sorry. I just, I can't. I, I'm good. Okay. Don't be rude, Noros. Well, he's yelling across the room. He can't help how he looks right now. I know that. I just. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm right here. It's actually like kind of more comfortable <laughs> than you'd expect. Um, once you're like in it, it's hard getting, 
hard getting there. But it's like, I don't know, it's kind of like a sweater, but like all over. Okay. I don't know what to do with that roll. Um... <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, well, you must need to eat more. Being a um, um, honey, do we have? Do, is this does this place provide food? No, I have communion wafers. That's it right now. I kind of okay. made this in a hurry. Right. And then you distracted me, so. That feels charged. Doesn't need to have everyone hear that. Okay. Um, yeah, all right. Yeah, well. I mean, I can make us a, a feast, but I feel like it's kind of a waste to use that at the moment. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing okay. I, I mean, we just, like, just ate. Um, True. That should be okay. I, I mean, I mean, and I'm like a, you know, a six foot tall dog. I can go find food if I need to. Yes. Uh, well, and like plus, I mean, I don't know if Eldrin's gonna have like a lot of like raw meat or. No. Uh, sorry. No, I mean, but I do tend to have a hankering for, you know. Yeah, for raw meat's probably the the nicer way to say it. Yeah, yeah. I rolled a nat twenty on this on this interaction, and I have no idea how Noros, how I Noros is, am, am going to be able to get around this. But somehow I do. Yeah. Um, uh, as you see, Noros just like kind of like, I think just like starts asking you werewolf questions. Um, I love it so much. Yeah, uh, I rolled a nat twenty, and I was like. I why did I roll? That's a crazy. And Norris just actually like stands up and goes and sits next to me. He's like, "Okay, I've always wanted to ask these questions, and I feel <laughs> comfortable enough to." <laughs> yeah. Okay. So as a like, you're like a full land mammal now. So like, and I know you you kind of are the whole time, but like you know, it's different. And so I'm um, so just ask you a bunch of questions on like, uh, uh, what urges you have when you're this way or when you're that way. What? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do does you the still hair... taste the, the 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 blood of whatever you eat still? Can you taste it in your mouth when you become a halfling again? <laughs> yeah. Uh, does the hair that comes out when you transform is it the same hair or does it regenerate as a different hair each time? Um, yeah. These are questions uh, that we deserve to know the answer. I think to. it regener. I think it regenerates each time. Um, the real kicker of it is the the hairball when you turn back into a human it's just it it stays with you for some reason whoa um, yeah that's crazy um but yeah i mean i i i'm a pretty like you know i'm a pretty i mean you know i'm a pretty chill guy but like i feel like i'm a little bit more of a like wild card when i'm a werewolf saying i'm a pretty chill guy yeah all yeah, I can yeah. think of is I, you mentioned twenty. <laughs> I want that T-shirt so bad. I'm a pretty oh, chill guy. All I can uh, think of is fantasy high. But yeah. wearing a, a tie-dye shirt, yeah. going, I'm a pretty chill guy. I'm a pretty chill oh. guy. But, you need some cut you know, I feel, I feel like I'm a little bit more of a, I don't know, a little bit more of a wild card. I, I, I can, can, I, I have, I feel like I have a little less control of my like impulses, which is a little fun sometimes. Um, Remember that time uh, Gerard and I shared uh, shared uh, buckets of knights' heads. Gerard is on the opposite side of the room. Yeah, just like looking at you. Uh, there's like you know, Saren and Gerard's relationship is is on the rise, but I think with mm -hmm. Gerard's lack of trust in that Saren will be like fully paying attention and like has mm -hmm. Gerard's back. Gerard is, is definitely on a like high alert sort of thing. Just like staring at you, yeah. not growling or anything like that. Just, just watching. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. All right. We're going to cut from you um, uh, to Wilbur. Uh, what is Wilbur doing? Um, I think Wilbur is, Probably just 
crawled up, like curled up in a uh, corner somewhere in the temple, um, just like resting his eyes and not trying not to like say anything to anyone. Cause he's still pretty shaken up. Okay. Um. You said resting your eyes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. Uh. All right. And that's, uh, I would say you don't necessarily perceive anything, but you're, you know, kind of like recollecting your sense of self. Um, um, Eldrin, what are you doing? Um, I'm sitting next to Wilbur in the corner with my hand on him, um, trying to like be comforting to him as he takes his little, as he brushes his eyes, not, not takes a little nap. Um, and I am staring at Brumhilda and studying her. And if I make eye contact with Guar, I don't know if I do at any point. I do um, pointedly look at Guar in a we need to talk kind of way. Cool. But I'm petting uh, Wilbur as I do that. You got it. Uh, go ahead and roll me an insight check. Guar, go ahead and roll me a perception check. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. During this time, Brumhilda is... I think from Eldrin's standpoint, one of the things that uh, Eldrin might find impressive, maybe, about Brumhilda is the idea of the, like, the, like, powerful woman, like, like, confidence, uh willing to take charge when need be. Um, uh, I think that is absolutely faded over time and understanding who Brumhilda is and recognizing the the fault in that is uh, a, 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 the to a fault is is a big asterisk of that, right? Um, so I think in this moment as you're you know, forgot that that stops my bad um in this moment as you're looking from hilda from hilda is not really m making any eye contact with anyone mm -hmm. um i imagine that uh and we'll we'll get to that for sure in a second i imagine that like whatever interaction that guar and from is having it's small uh at least coming from her end uh, she seems uh, she seems weak physically somewhat maybe like timid mm -hmm. with a 22 because that does pass the DC that I had for 20 on this you actually see Abram Hilda that uh, you feel like in some ways I don't know if I can say this but I think from Eldrin's perspective you see Abram Hilda possibly all masks aside uh, timid scared mm -hmm. embarrassed uh, mortified I guess would be a better word for that um, exhausted and just uh, it it it's very telling to you that Brumhilda doesn't meet anyone's eyes uh, because yeah. Brumhilda is a very look the person straight in the eye type of person. And Eldrin's just thinking about the promise that they made to each other, basically, that she would try to let people in as long as El Eldrin makes sure that they she doesn't lose them because of her. So Eldrin's just kind of staring at her and thinking about that. 
Because Brumhilda seems to be holding up her end of the bargain by just being here with us in Guar, so. Um, yeah. Oh, also, also while I'm petting Wilbur, yeah. I, I throw a death ward on him. Cool. Uh, she's also, like, I'd say because, uh, probably because Wilbur is does not have his eyes open, uh, Brumhilda is a, stealing more glances towards Wilbur than anyone else. Um, but yeah, uh, Guar. Oh, did Guar do the perception check for me? Or what did you get on that perception check? Who are you asking? Uh, you. Oh, perception check. Uh, I got a 10. Cool. Um, I'm not focused on anything except Brumhilda right now. I know. Right. I kind of, I kind of like looked at that as being the case. Even if you rolled high, it would be after the moment of whatever you want here. Yeah. It'd be what you okay. notice. So, but with a ten, there's no moment you don't see it. Um, so. um I would say also, uh, Guar is has position he, he and Brumhilda as far away from everyone as possible. Like, still with an eye shot, but I'm just trying to keep my distance from everyone, just in case. Um, so. And I think I'm just holding her and just, like, waiting. And just, like, being being present with her and just, you know. That was a rough day, culminating with a really, really, really rough house collapsing. Mm-hmm. And also, you know, low key giving Wilbur cancer. Um, so, uh, I think I'm just gonna just like take some breaths and just hold her because it seems like that's what she needs right now, even if she would never, ever, ever admit it. <laughs> so, that's what I'm gonna do. She's not fighting it. She's forgotten what she started fighting for. She just yeah. wore her down, finally. It's time to bring the ship into the shore. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I think every now and then I think Guar would look up just to kind of see where everybody is and make sure no one's getting too close. Because Guar really hasn't had a chance to explain why he's staying away from everyone. So, uh, yeah. But, you know, when, in a rare moment, Guar is being quiet. Um, this is from Hilda. Mm. I should probably, um, try to collect some of the things in Marvin's I should just make sure some of the items are okay. There's a few things that if they... There's so many things in the house that I, I... I'm afraid that there's something that I forgot is in her and... Just takes a little ting bottle. I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, you, uh... uh I'm going to say no inside check required here on this. You get the idea that Brumhilda is uh, making timid excuses to uh, to leave if you let her. Not leave, leave, but like... Uh, uh, I think you you get the feeling of like someone who is offering up like if you want to talk about me because I know I'm a problem and you don't want me to be around while you're talking about it I can go and do this that's what you read from that um, uh, <clears throat> Guar would just uh, the, the initial re response would be that Guar wants her to keep resting so I say I am not going anywhere right now and neither should you. I know I healed you, but you've been through so much. I, 
just want you to feel safe for a little while. You see her look over at Wilbur, who's curled up and just, just nods. That's it. She doesn't respond. She doesn't let go either. She's still there. Um. Yeah. Eldrin, at this point, you... Uh, you, you clearly see that Guar is not picking up on your look. Um, do you choose to uh, walk up? Um, yeah. Uh, Eldrin will um, signal for, if Norris is still walking around or whatever. Or I don't know if he's sitting with Milo still. I'd signal for him to take my place. I don't want Wilbur to be alone. Um, mm. And um, I would get up and go over to Guar and Broomhilda. No, 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 no. Back up. Back up. Please, back up. Don't get too close. Can we talk outside, Guar? I look down at Broomhilda. I look at the rest of the group. Do not get any closer. Please. I look at the right. small space. Yeah. yeah. And then just give Guar a very pointed look like that. <laughs> it's not going to matter. Well, no one else realizes what's going on yet, right? Yeah. I, I know think... a little bit from healing Wilbur. Yes. You know, you know a little bit, but I think also... I'd say Aldrin... If, er, for Aldrin... If it makes sense to roll an insight check on that, there's a uh, do so. But there's also the matter of fact sort of like part of Elgin that maybe you just it's just not something you think about is the idea of like Guar is uh, you know, uh, whether or not it would be effective or not, Guar is trying to maintain some sort of order here. He knows something and even if it's useless, it's it's still it's still possibly protecting everybody, right? Okay. Guar? Yeah. Is that, yes. That's what, yeah. Yes. Because I don't I don't know how close you have to right. be for it to happen. Because Brumhilda did just like went walk directly past Wilbur, mm -hmm. so it wasn't like it was you know twenty feet away or whatever. So, um. So okay, so then I, yeah, I would say Guar look yeah, I, I look down at Brumhilda and say, I, I will be right back. Oh. And I give her my pack to like my my bed roll to lay on. Yeah, I think she just lays right down. Yeah. Before they walk out, uh Saren is gonna mention to them um about the lights that she saw. And explain that. Which I kind of got what she meant but like okay so she saw it 200 feet away and she saw four th things of light was that because of Milo or is that what she assumed was it something to do with the well, I'm not, not sure okay Did it look you said something about the wolves or something Celeste in that light uh, the moonlight was what you missed the light that was that was on the book and around it was the reflection of the moonlight through the trees. Um, Saren, you saw the light and went, mm -hmm. that's not what's important, and moved right past. So that was what you missed, so to speak. And it was a 25 perception check to, to see it. Um, so as far as the green motes of light, uh, I don't think you... I don't think even like role play wise, I don't think you have any sort of idea of it being associated with Milo. Okay, because you said something about like when he transforms, like wolves come out, but instead there was the that's lights. What, that's what you, that's why you looked around. Okay. Yeah. Cool. That makes more sense because I was like, I I don't know what you mean by that. If I'm supposed to know something that I yeah, no no, no. Don't it was know. it was just the excuse okay. of like why like why in this moment would you notice this okay cool so she just mentions that she saw that so like 
pay, pay attention when you're out there. I, I don't know what it was. Okay. We won't be long. And if, if y'all are leaving the temple, Mila's gonna go outside too. Okay. As I walk out the door with, with Eldrin, I said, you better not turn me into a spider. Me? Me either. I just... I don't know how to do that spell. Whoa! Boo. Um, and uh, Milo's gonna uh, uh, just kind of like... Just a small point of yeah. order here, because I think, Milo, you were you were suggested to come and sit next to Wilbur. No, Noros was. Oh, Nor. I'm sorry, Noros. Yeah. Okay. No. And uh, and so yeah, as Noro get, Noros gets up and uh, those two go outside, Milo's gonna like uh, leave the temple and just find his uh, and just I'll, I'll I'll be back in a little bit. And he like scampers off to the woods. Be careful. Okay. I'm still Should taller you be... than you. Should you be outside during the full? Uh, okay, bye. <laughs> As he's like scampering away. I just mm-hmm. think it's funny that he's still only six feet tall, even though he's a super werewolf because he's a halfling and I'm mm-hmm. still taller than him. I just think it's funny. Yeah. Yeah. So Eldrin's going to walk towards like away from the temple and like, I don't know if there's any trees or anything I can lean against. And he's just going to like lean against something and have her arms crossed and wait for you to join her. I'm just going to stand where I am. What? Can we talk away from the, the temple? I guess. And I walk over and I lean back against the same tree, but on the other side. Interesting. So, place. so neither of you are looking at each other. You're 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 in the same opposite sides of the tree. Eldrin, <laughs> cool. I don't know. Yeah, Eldrin refuses to move because she feels like he's doing this on purpose. Oh, so, I totally am. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Eldrin says, fine, be that way. Um, I, I, just... I think we need to tell her tonight. After everything that much just happened? easier if I could see your face. I just don't want to risk exposure to you. I, I was sitting with her the whole time. I just don't want to. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what. How how. How much effect she has when she's calm? I don't know. What do you mean, effect? What happened to Wilbur? I, I think it was because of Brumhilda. Well, that much was clear. But I think it's just her mere presence. I don't think she did anything to him. I think it was just her being close to him. But we've been close to her before. I've seen it before. I mean, for God's with... sakes, you had sex with her. I don't know how important that is right now, but that's true, yes. I mean, that's the closest you can be to someone, is what I'm saying. Well, unless you run your blade through and go through the person and split them in half, and then you go through them and then... <laughs> I mean, you know what? You're right. You got me there. That's true. That that would be a lot of bodily fluids that, you know, you don't know what you're going to catch when that happens. Indeed. It's not I... ready for that at all. Yeah. So. Has, have you have you done that? Had sex? No. Cleave someone in, in two and run through their body or whatever. Of, of course I have. Haven't you seen me fight? Okay. I, I prefer not to, but sometimes, you know, when you're trying to strike fear into your enemies, you you, you do what's necessary. Uh, deception check. <laughs> There's no way you do that and not want to do that. Right. <laughs> right. 18. 18, okay. Eldrin, that's up to you. I just... No, I'm, yeah, Eldrin's like, I'm the wrong person for you to be having this discussion with. Um, maybe you can talk to my mother someday about this. Uh, I think I could talk to, talk to my her. mother about this. Isn't she dead? Yes, that's why I said I wish I could talk to her about this. Oh, I thought you said you... Sorry. Oh, I think that's what Norris is talking about. That was a little heartless. 
but it's not because it's so true. you're just here to okay so you're just here to tell me or you're uh, you you want to talk to me to tell me that you don't want to talk to me and to remind me of my mother being dead this is fantastic this is a fun conversation i mean you and, brought her up no i brought you out here so we could discuss what's going on i just made a promise to Brunhilde that i would kill her if things get too bad i'm sorry what yeah, I mean, I was this close to killing her when we were in there. Uh, I didn't, obviously. Um, and then we had a little discussion. Of course, quiet for a minute. Uh, and then I say, When we were in the shadow fell, she... During the battle, she told me I needed to kill her, too. I'm a little hurt that I wasn't the first one she went to with that. I mean, what did she expect from you? I peek around the tree and go, seriously? Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I told her I didn't want to. I learned from you. I told her that she deserves love. I told her that she's worthy of it, that we'll protect her. Blah, blah, blah. All the stuff that Guar says is always going on in my head now. Guar, I, 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 because... I, I smile like, like, like I'm rubbing off on you. Anyway, I also agreed because obviously I'm not going to let her destroy my friends and family and I will kill her if it comes to that and if you're not strong enough to do it. Guard chuckles a little bit at that. <laughs> you think I'm not strong enough to kill someone? Emotionally. I'm not talking about physically. I have, I would prefer to kill them physically rather than emotionally, yes. No, I meant you're not emotionally prepared to do what needs to be done if from Hilda. Explodes. How many battles have you been in? Okay. Anyway. Tall had that effect on the citizens of Dwendover when he would walk amongst people. I remember people getting sick and not realizing it. I remember them acting euphoric around him and just like obsessed with him as if he sang popular songs. And had multiple costume changes and, and, and I think she, she has this and now that we know that she is his daughter it, it all makes sense so then what's the plan could she could she, could she control this could tall control this like did everyone I mean you yes were, you, tall could you don't control it tall what Tall, Tall could do it whenever he wanted to. Whenever he wanted to f feel adoration and worship, he could just he could just turn it on. I don't think that Brimhilda is aware of it. I, I, Even my, more reason that we need we need to just tell her all of this. My best guess is that it happens when she's under duress or when okay. she's overwhelmed, and I have to talk I mean, to Wilbur might... about what what he experienced. But I think that's what's happening. I mean, I can tell you when I, when I cured him, what I felt was this awe, in, I don't know, this feeling, this type of awe, but it quickly went away because it didn't make sense for him because I worship Persona, so why would I worship anyone else? Um, but it Eldred. wasn't unpleasant. What? Do you think I feel that way I feel toward her because of this? No, I don't. I mean, because I don't like her on a good day, so I don't feel that way. So I, I think you're you're fine. Gar, I, I don't think that's what this is. I mean, you never wanted to have sex with Tall, did you? Never once. There you go. No Roll for him. Check. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, it's not that weird night. <laughs> no, for for him, he. Do you think he ever gave a shit about consent? Do you ever think he ever gave a shit about interest or or or? or... Art. Why do you think he possesses he... people against their will? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> All right, with that, we're going to cut from there. Um, uh, just for a second, as uh, Milo, you are running through the forest. Doing Watch Patch got out of the house and you're going to eat him. Doing <laughs> werewolf stuff. What are you up to? Yeah. Yeah, Milo's, um, uh, Milo's talk with Noros. Um, 
reminded him that he, uh, yeah, he might, he's a little peckish. Um, so he's, he's out, he's out hunting. He's looking for squirrels and squirrels and, uh, like small, small rodents and such. Cool. Uh, give me a survival check with advantage. Nineteen. Nineteen. Nice. Uh with a nineteen, yeah, you um we kinda like cut to Milo possibly maybe like uh I think like less than ten minutes later and Milo you have like two squirrels bodies uh of various forms of uh in your hands. Um mm -hmm. uh just just kind of like I think maybe just trudging through and just like, just eating the squirrel like a snack. Yeah, bones yeah. and all. He's um yeah he's gonna bring uh and he's gonna bring back uh he's gonna bring back like two more snacking squirrels. Okay, cool. Um, as you find those uh, other two slim jim squirrels, um, mm. give me a perception check. And also give me a stealth check, actually. Uh, you do not have advantage right now, by the way, on your stealth, I don't think. Yeah. Okay, I was going to ask about that, because, like, my... Um, when I transform, if I was wearing armor, it would still hold the same strength as my armor would give me. I would. truly like above board. I looked at yeah. that as a realm of like your AC becomes kind of more of a natural armor sort of thing. That's fair. Yeah. Um, the perception was a 22. Okay. And stealth was. I can't see shit. 19. Okay. Uh. Uh, with the 22, you see, uh, four little motes of green light, uh, about, um, it's maybe like 60 feet off to the left, uh, like to the left of you, um, uh, as you look in that direction, you see the uh, the lights disappear, and then I need you to give me. I'm gonna say, give me a wisdom saving throw. Actually, sorry. Apologies. Give me an Arcana check. It's eleven. Eleven. Okay. Eleven beats the DC in this, I think. Um, because the effect of this spell, so to speak, would normally work. You feel that there was a spell that was being cast on you. Mm. And it didn't work. Um, uh, Milo's, yeah, Milo's going to head towards those uh, green bits of points of light. Cool. Um, I'm going to say, give me... Hmm. Give me a luck roll. Nineteen. Nineteen. Wow, nice. Um, as you get closer, you uh, as you kind of like walk towards those those green modes of light, you start to hear sounds, almost like like kind of like clicking sounds and I'd say from where you were at once you get to about 30 feet I need you to give me a dexterity saving throw if you have it dexterity Again. 23 23 okay cool <laughs> Uh, with a 23, you feel the effects from an, from an, 
from a space that you don't see. You don't see the lights anymore, mm -hmm. but you uh, feel the effects. Of, and I'm sorry, I should have had you. Have I? I actually, no, I haven't. I haven't yet. Yeah. Um, I'll I'll roll on my end. Okay. All right. Um, you feel uh, your body all of a sudden just get wrapped up um, in this sticky sort of substance. Um, and you're able to pretty easily kind of like break through it um, as you see that there is you are covered in a uh, like a uh, almost like a wet stringy but extremely uh, extremely adhesive like uh, substance uh, you are in a web but or you were in a web but you're able to still move around mm. Uh, yeah, I guess there's no, um, I guess there's no, like, no real stealth if you're in the middle, in the middle of a web. Um, mm -hmm. the, uh, so I guess my, Milo is going to, um, in the direction of the points of light, Milo is going to just pounce. Okay. Uh, give me an attack roll. Unarmed strike. Or whatever, whatever you're, whatever you're choosing to attack with. I'd say if you're, if you are, you know, if you're pouncing, I imagine you're. Uh, what is your intention here? Uh, the intention is kind of to, to grab whatever's trying to trip okay. me up. Yeah, give me an um, athletics check then. Can can it be an attack roll? Um, um, no, you you. I was gonna let you, <laughs> and then you asked me specifics. So. Yeah, uh, so it was a fifteen. Fifteen, cool. Uh, fifteen. Cool, I love it. Uh, yeah, you uh, grab on, you like kind of pounce in the idea of like coming down on something mm -hmm. and you feel yourself kind of stop short as you do manage to have hold of something. You feel, um, uh, you feel a like weird, almost like cloth and uh, uh, like a heavy cloth, like almost like a vinyl sort of sensation. Mm. Um, and uh, uh, with your right hand, you uh, you have your hand just outstretched enough that you are um, that you are uh, touching something that feels like cold metal, cold steel. Uh, touching something like you steel. don't see anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, as you are uh, quickly carried off further into the forest. And we're going to pause you there. Okay. Uh, you won the grapple check, by the way. Uh, okay. Cutting back to Wilbur. Um... You see Brumhilda's kind of like, she's been resting her head, but she kind of like sits up a little bit and uh, tries to talk to Wilbur, who is still relatively close by. Noros is right next to you, Wilbur. Uh, are you, are you okay? If you're at all blaming yourself for any of this, please don't. Okay. Um, hard not to. It's uh, not. Your, it's not your fault. I can. I can still apologize, right? Yes, but you don't have to. You have nothing to be sorry for, from Hilda. Are you okay? 
You had a whole house fall on you. I feel like I've had a whole house fall on me. Um. I don't I don't know who or what was uh back there. I mean I'm not not trying to feign responsibility, but I I I uh, I guess, you know, I'm obviously sorry for everything that happened to you in that moment, but I guess what I'm really sorry for is uh, snapping at you. It's okay. I understand. We're a frustrating group. It's okay that you snapped at me. It's nothing personal. You're under a lot of stress. You should be gentle with yourself. Um, from Hilda's gonna roll an insight check on you, Wilbur. No. Feel free to roll a deception or persuasion, your choice. But don't tell me which, just tell me what you get. Okay. Um, even with a uh, nine, she got a 15. So what is Wilbur's, what is Wilbur, what does she see from Wilbur? Um, I don't think Wilbur, like, makes any attempt to, like, sit up and look back at her. I think Wilbur's just kind of laying there, uh, with his eyes open, but he's looking at the floor. Uh, he doesn't want to, like, make eye contact with her. Um. And I think his eyes probably look a little watery. Um, I never really got the chance to tell you this, but, uh, I was, uh, I was there when you were born. you're just little your first words were I'm hungry that sounds like me I remember that um You weren't supposed to um, remember me or Cerelius. Uh, but uh, I don't know if you ever had uh, questions on that whole thing. I, I can only know as much as so really is, uh, would tell me. But I remember that. I remember that was, uh, <laughs> that was kind of an accomplishment. Um, I, uh, I remember that Winona and, and Walter uh, 
at the time were. There's no good way to put this. Uh, getting dialed in and were somewhat uh, over emotional, I guess. So when you were born, you saying I'm hungry uh, proved that uh, you're starting to get it right. He was starting to get right. He said we, I would say he. Not that I, not that I am not glad that you're here. Um, I don't know. I just, I guess I. Did pretty well with Winona. She has some pretty amazing abilities. I think you should have stopped with me. Wilma's such a brat. Uh, Wilbur, are you looking at from Hilda? Nope. Cool. Uh, say roll me an insight check. Unless you choose that you're not interested. Can Sarah roll an insight check on Broomhilda? Absolutely. 22. Actually, I'm going to say, Saren, roll me a perception check. Because I think, I, honestly, I think the insight check would be, would have to be pretty high. As she's probably not going to, yeah. What, what does Saren get on, his, on her perception check first? Thirty-one. Thirty-one. I rolled a nineteen. Okay. <laughs> uh, with a thirty-one, uh, Saren, you see a little bit of the old Brumhilda back as she has a very wry smile when Wilbur says, "Cerulius did a good job with Winona, having that magical ability." Um, I think we'll keep that insight check in mind for Wilbur, but Wilbur, you're purposely not looking at um, Brumhilda, and I think she does clock that, so she doesn't say anything more about that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he did a he did a good job. I imagine it was hard growing up with him. No, it, it wasn't. Everything was very easy. That's good. I wonder where he is right now. I'm afraid to look. Yeah. That was really scary. Yeah. For me, too. I mean, I'm, it doesn't help to say this, but I... I it wasn't like I was controlled by something else, but it, it felt, I don't know. I think I felt 
amplified in a way that was volatile and felt it felt good yeah just you should be gentle with yourself just try to remain as calm as you can in situations like that I'm not placing any blame on you, just so you know. I don't blame you at all. Thanks, Wilbur. Um, and I think in this moment, uh, from Hilda notices, Saren, that you're paying attention. And she kind of takes that moment, uh, makes eye contact with you for a second and then uh for uh, less than a second like just enough to notice that you're looking at her and she uh goes back to like lay down and i'd say at this point because eventually you guys are gonna have to go to sleep she goes to sleep uh Wilbur will try to go to sleep and hopefully fall asleep because Wilbur still needs to talk to Riley. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Darren, roll me one more perception check. Are you kidding me? A nat 20? Oh my okay. god. Uh, Getting a different dice. Uh, <laughs> with a nat 20, um, you can't roll below a dirt, uh, below like a 20 anyways, right? Yeah, I can't roll below. Would you say perception? Perception, yeah. Yeah, I literally can't roll below a Yeah, so I shouldn't even made you roll. Um, cool. <laughs> uh, with a nat 20, um, you kind of take a second in this somewhat awkward and like lazy sort of state to just go back to looking out the window and you see those motes of light again uh this time they look like they're getting bigger and coming towards you uh, like like truly from like a realm of like maybe 200 feet away um they go out again but you see, <laughs> you see a very large werewolf uh, holding on. But it's weird because it looks like the creature it's holding on to must be invisible. Um, so it's just, it's just Milo floating into view. Um, uh as milo is uh is stuck on whatever this thing is uh uh i i, I it's it's saren's point of view but real quick milo once you see the temple do you let go uh yeah i think i think milo would probably let go okay yeah, yeah, I think my little probably let go. Yeah. You got it. Uh cool. I'm gonna roll a I'm gonna roll again. Uh you feel another spell trying to be cast on you and it doesn't succeed. Um uh as soon as you let go, uh give me a perception check because to cast this spell it would have to drop its invisibility. So for Glar and I we're outside still. Did mm -hmm. we see this? Mm -hmm. Um roll me a perception check. I'd say it's probably gonna be pretty high. It's starting out from like two hundred uh, okay. 200 feet away. So. Uh, Otherwise, you're about to find out from Saren. That's a, yeah, that's a 19. Yeah, 19 for me. Cool. Yeah, you guys are in your conversation. Okay. Um, 
Uh, but 21 for perception for Milo. 21, cool. Uh, Milo, you hear, and I'll say you kind of heard this the whole journey of where you were going. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, also, uh, roll me a sight of hand check to see if you're still holding on, you're still able to hold on to the dead squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> eat them, just eat them now. Stick them in your mouth. Oh. Mm. A 14. <laughs> Sorry, man. Oh, I left them. Oh. You left them. Uh, you gotta eat but this thing. with the perception check, um, it's more based on hearing because you can't see anything. You can feel that you're on some sort of invisible creature. Um, but uh, what you've heard is uh, chittering sort of sounds. Um, uh, and the sound of like wooden wheels turning. As you jump off and a spell is cast again at you, what you see, um, say with a, uh, you said a 21, is that what the mm-hmm. perception check was? Cool. Uh, so that's enough to say that what you see is four, uh, the four uh, motes of light are green eyes, glowing green eyes. And you see uh, this gigantic head of this uh spider um it's head about the size of i mean you're you're kind of big so i would say about the size of like twice the size of your head um it is uh turning and moving and backing away and as it backs away you see uh a very large uh it almost kind of like looks like it's supposed to be its thorax for a second but it's a very large red uh burlap sack um the sack itself is like it's twice the size of you it's huge Mm. um and you can see wrapped around it tied like uh tied with ropes and things like that are various sort of pieces of weaponry and uh random assortment assortments of things that like look like a bunch of other things and you can see that underneath it is a wagon um, what you see as the creature scurries into the forest is this thing. Huh. I hate it. As it, uh, I turns, see it. uh, I will say you see some sort of glimpse of this. No, I mean, uh, like on the screen, am I supposed to see something? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I'll put it. I'll put it in the chat here uh, I'll, I'll uh, during a break. We'll get to it. Um, well, hold on, hold on. Stay there for now. Um, so, uh, as you see this thing scurry into the forest, uh, uh, Milo, uh, what do you say or do, or do you just stay there? Yeah, Milo's. Milo's. Milo's gonna chase after it as he sees it, and just, hey, what the, what the hell? Cool. Uh, you continue to kind of like run after this thing as it seems to go back out into the darkness. Um, uh, and uh, as we as we will continue this hunt here uh, from our break, we're going to take a 10 minute break. We'll see you guys in 10. Bye.
Okay. So, uh, coming back into <clears throat> uh, this scene, uh, we're going to take it actually from uh, Guar and Eldrin's perspective right now. Saren, you saw what you saw. You saw glimpses of some sort of thing with legs. Um, I'm going to put it here in the chat thing. I wanted to just... I, I can see it now. I oh, you can see it now. Okay, great. I hate it. I hate it so yeah. much. It's all right. You can hate it. It's fine. Also, the um, second you said burlap sack, I'm like, I swear to God, if this is Aesop, I'm about to kill a child. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to kill a child. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. Cool. Uh, so, uh, yeah, coming from uh, Eldrin and Gwark, Gwark, yeah, both of you guys don't see anything. Um uh, yeah, I mean, I had something else I wanted to say to Guar if we yeah, want to continue our conversation. Okay. I had to cut it uh, because that was, a, that was, a, yeah, that no, was an fine. interesting spot. It's fine. Um, so, when, when, you know, once it's clear Guar wasn't, you know, assaulted by Tall, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Eldrin, <laughs> uh, Eldrin um, says, um, so you explain to Eldrin, basically, like, I'm just trying to remember that, um, there's a sickness that Brumhilda can cause, right? Right, and, and it's the same as Tall, and I saw how okay. Tall turned it on, but I'm not sure um, that Brumhilda is aware okay. of it. Yeah. Okay, so Eldrin says, so then that means that it, it can probably be trained. That's true. I have an idea, and I'm surprised that I'm even going to suggest this, but um, after speaking with Huxley... Um, it be I know. Um, it became clear that he, despite his morals on certain things, um, he's a very intelligent uh, engineer, creator. I don't know what it is he does. Um, but he talked about machines and things like that that him and Raylor created. And I'm just wondering if maybe... He could create something like some sort of suppressant or like a like a piece of jewelry or something she could wear that could help like rein this in i mean well i mean to your point i mean we didn't even realize it was there until wilbur was affected by it so clearly some of us would have gotten sick by now if if, if yeah it was around all the time i definitely would have and I yep. did not. Not even a little bit, so. Okay, I'm glad. Um, I mean, I, it's just an option. Huxley was, had, there's a, I need to fill all of you in, but Huxley said that there was like a, a machine that him and Raylor built that could, uh, healing spells had, were imbued in it and things like that. And I mean, I look at my bracelet and I was like, this bracelet, can do the sending spell. Maybe there's something we can do that can imbue like calm emotions or or some sort of enchantment that can help even just shield her like living light essence or something like that. I'm willing to do whatever it takes for her to feel like she's been more in uh, I, I think I, we need to tell her soon about yeah, the look, celestials. I peek around the tree again. You're right. We, we need to tell her. But she looked exhausted, so maybe we take the night. Hopefully Wilbur can talk to Riley in his dream. Yes. We we, we should let her rest. But, but we need to tell her. We are not all sleeping at the same time. We need to take turns. We need to keep watch. She is oh, no, volatile. No. Of course. I, I, will, I will take the first watch. Okay. Uh, perfect timing, Saren. This is when you can jump in if you would like. Yeah, Saren, she she doesn't <clears throat> want to wake uh, Wilbur and Brumhilda up because she saw it go back into the woods, correct? Mm -hmm. You also um, definitely saw Milo chasing after Yeah, her. yeah. Uh, so she she very calmly goes to the door and like kind of rips open the door and shuts it and says, "Hey guys, you know those those lights I mentioned? Um, yes. Did you let Milo go? Just go out there? Cause um, I mean, I don't think it's really letting he, him. He's his own yeah, person, well, and I, he was hungry. So werewolf he goes it, and comes as he pleases. Yeah. yeah. Well, 
Anyway, the light, yeah, the lights were coming towards uh, the temple, and I oh. saw Milo, um, I guess, riding on top of something. It was what? What invisible. What are you talking about? And then he went back into the woods and chased it. Green I, lights? It's. I feel like we should maybe be concerned. I, um... I can't use this anymore today, but one of you can, and I pass my bracelet to Guar. Uh, Bahamut's claws, and I pull out my lantern of revealing. And I say, and... check on him. See if he needs our help. Well, I will say, Milo, like, and Sarah, do you know this? Milo took off straight running. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I say to Sarah, was he being chased, yeah. or was he the chaser? Oh, no, he, well, he was <laughs> he on top ch- of it, and the then chaser. he started chasing it, just... <laughs> Full running back into the woods. Which which way did he go? Well, Gwar, first see if he even needs help. I don't want to get involved if this is like some sort of weird like werewolf thing and he's just trying to eat. Like, I don't is really he... want to see that. Are we sure Maybe he's like... of sound mind? I think he is. I mean, like, deers don't usually have glowing green lights I mean, coming off of them. Very magical world, Saren. Yeah, if you don't believe in magic, what do you believe in? Yeah, Saren, what's going on? <laughs> I'm not saying we don't check on him. I'm just saying that why waste the energy if we can check on him from here first? I, I look at Eldrin and say, shun the non-believer. Uh, Milo, roll me a death saving throw. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so I, I put the bracelet on and I, uh, I say, I've never talked to Milo in werewolf form. Milo, 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 hey, hey, what are you doing? Come here, come here, Milo, come here. Who's a good boy? Uh, Milo, roll me an athletics check. I I just want to know when we're friends. It's, it's still Milo. He has it under control. I thought we established that, Guar. You don't even talk to Gerard like that. Yeah, yes, I do. seriously. He's yes, still I... a person. Uh, Gerard is not a person. No, Milo. Oh, you're... Wouldn't Milo be more like a beast? Yes. With feelings. Well, I know, that's why feelings. I was nice to him. <laughs> Milo, what'd you get? Uh, 16. 16? Cool. Uh, they 16, you are gaining on the thing that you are chasing, but you hear Guar <laughs> saying that. Guar, I'm fine. Stop being weird. Run back. <laughs> and then he, he keeps running. Cool. You got it. All right. We'll, we'll cut to that scene then. Uh, cool. Awesome. So Milo uh, easily overtakes this thing that uh, cannot... Uh, 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 well, I cannot, and I think just kind of like chooses not to at this point to really just go invisible. Um, eventually just turns around, um, looks at you, uh, kind of like moves itself as tall as it can be, which is which is still significantly taller than you. I'd say probably maybe like <clears throat> somewhere between like eight or nine feet, but with the sack on its back is like towering to like 15, 16 feet. Um, um, is it kind of like moves itself up and just goes. <laughs> um, Milo can understand if it speaks a language. Yep. And it went. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Milo's like, what's going on? Why are you like, why are you trying to. <laughs> what do you mean? What are you doing? What's going on? So I think like no. there's no there's no role here. I think this mm. thing is trying to intimidate you as its last like ditch effort, no. and there's no way you're intimidated. Um, there's no it's there's no way. Hux, like, it's, hey, what's up? It's tried th- yeah. it's tried like three times to get Milo, and he accidentally went for a ride. Right. Yeah. Are you gonna towards have another his, like pet? towards his friends? God. <laughs> okay. It's another. Ju- this is his, this is actually another Duchess. Duchess. Uh, what do you say to it? Uh, yeah, Milo's Milo's just gonna look it in its eyes and say, "What? Why are you trying to cast spells on me? What's going on?" Stop it! Hello. 
Ah. Don't eat me. I'm, I'm not gonna eat you, I just... You... Like... I don't know, you kept ca trying to cast spells on me. What's going on? Ah! And and you feel another ca uh, spell being cast on you. Uh, he is casting... Uh, uh, a specialized form of sleep on mm. you. Um, but that makes sense. you, uh, so it's a, it's, uh, I'll just, uh, this is a weird time to mention this, but like above word, it's like, it's a full like 100 HP. Mm -hmm. So anything with anything below 100 HP will instantly fall asleep. Mm. Um, okay. But you have more than that. So like every time he's, that's why, that's why this thing seems to be frustrated. <laughs> yeah. Milo, Milo's gonna like, yawn and like I've had a long day what do you, what do you need uh, for me. You can test me. You can go. I mean go. I mean who 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 are you you live like you live around here these your woods uh -huh. come here often Wow. Okay. Do you, uh, do, do you just typically cast random spells on anything that wanders by? You, you came after me. I was just minding my own business, just running for, running. I was just referring to. That's all I was doing. And I was just cutting the shadows. Full, full transparency. I love, I love the yeah. comment. I cannot understand you. Yeah, good, good. <laughs> Didn't okay. you say I'm collecting shinies? That is what he said. But yeah, this is his voice. Get in the immersion. If you can't understand, Milo can't understand. Milo understands every tongue that is spoken. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, cannot. I mean, this is this is an accent. This is not a this is not a language. Uh, and actually, that's a good point to tell you, like, it is speaking common. Yeah. Um. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cheat and say, what, what kind of shinies are you finding? I still, I still collect things. I'm, I'm a collector. I do. I, I collect things too. I, and Milo's gonna like dig in his bag and, um, and pull out a, uh, 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 pull out one of, uh, one of the, uh, one of Duchess's tears. Okay, cool. Um, you see, as you reach into your bag, mm -hmm. um, the creature who is like full on, like, like fuck off, I want nothing to do with you, uh, has fully 180'd mm -hmm. um, and is now like looming, leering over, you know, you and the bag, but essentially like looking in the bag as you're pulling something out. And you see, as you pull it out, it's, you see it kind of like moves around. Oh. Yeah, it's kind of, it's pretty neat, isn't it? Is it about a tread? What do you have? As he puts it back in his uh, satchel. You see it kind of like spider moves around. And at this point, you see um, as it shifts in its position, the cart somewhat seems to shift with it it seems like um looking at the at the legs it you don't actually see its thorax mm -hmm. um i'd say at a certain point in time you kind of get that whether it's now or later you get the vintage point of like understanding that its thorax is sitting in the cart and the sack is sitting on top of it mm. um uh Oh. oh, hold on. You see him kind of like reach an extremely long limb. Like, yeah, I think like maybe like like eight or nine feet long as it like moves and like extends backwards 
to opening the top of the bag and just starts to kind of like pull things out for you to look at. Um, roll me a d20. 16. 16, nice. Uh, weird first. Hold on, let me see if there's a... No. Yeah, okay, great. Uh, it, <laughs> there's like a moment of like, uh, like possible excitement as you see it mm -hmm. pulls out something that you don't see like at all for a second until you see it's actually on. It's like mm -hmm. the tip of its hand. It's just mm -hmm. a little ring. Uh, you see it's like a it's like a uh a uh, it looks to be like it's not really a gold like more like a bronze there's no mm -hmm. inscriptions on it um uh no form of jewelry it's just a bronze ring mm. oh true mm. i'm not much of a i've got these gloves i'm, I'm not much uh, much of a jewelry person oh sure. Ah, uh, puts his hand back in. They roll another d twenty. Eleven. Eleven. Uh, yeah, last, cool. Last last time I turned down the chance to get a ring, it was a ring of invisibility. <laughs> Good job, Milo. Uh, I'm already a halfling. I can't do. I can't go full. Full total. Uh, <laughs> you see, uh, you see him like reach a same sort of like rummage room. Mm. And you see a very like a very rusted iron sword, um, like kind of like almost in like a gladius sort of shape. Oh, this this smuggled around. It's, I mean, it's kind of like, and Milo pulls out his uh, coral blade. I. I already have a blade that's like pretty, pretty rusted. If it's, just, if it's smart, you're not the trunk. Mm. I don't really need a sword. Do you okay. have anything? Do you, do you have any? Do you have any sort of like hats or like a, a hat? Yeah, or like a, I don't know. Oh. Hmm. So, uh, I have an orb. You have an orb? An orb? I mean, an orb for an orb sounds like a good trade to me. Okay, hold on a second. Um, you see, he now, like, he now does this weird sort of, like, turns 180 and starts to kind of, like, look back in the bag for something specific. Uh, uh, last thing I'll say before we cut this scene, uh, Milo, you hear something chittering and like uh, like doing like a high-pitched sort of like uh, like shrieking sound in a cage that is being dragged next to him. Mm. Um, and you you hear him just go, Quiet, Abel, I'm doing business. And you see him continue to move through. Um, and we're going to pause you there. Uh, so, Guar, you were off to look for Milo. Um, well, he said not to. <laughs> or or you're not to? No, he what just said stop being weird, didn't he? I, uh, and he said, I'm fine. I said, stop being weird, I'm fine. It's fine. Uh, I, I relayed that to the rest of the group. <laughs> stop being weird, okay. it's fine. Yeah. The ability for Milo to give zero information is yeah. un is so good. It's so good. <laughs> Eldrin says, "Okay, well, I mean, it's fine." Listen, if if Milo is in full super werewolf mode and he says it's fine, it probably is. Yeah, maybe we should go back in to the temple. Uh, okay, what he can handle I mean, if himself. You if you if you want to go find no, him no I, I really don't <laughs> I'm exhausted and just be quiet Broomhilda and Wilbur are already sleeping and she just okay. walks back in uh, Saren okay. wait before you go oh, in and uh, then I and then I tell Saren all the things I told Eldrin she, okay <laughs> okay 
You got it. I have some stuff to tell you too, but I feel like it's better to tell everyone, so I, I can wait till the morning. I will say also this, Saren, as you go to turn back in, you see Gerard in the doorway. And uh, roll me an animal hand and check. Okay. Is it with advantage like it used to be with Gerard? Yeah, I think so. actually worked. 17, 24. Uh, you, the 24, uh, you, you notice that Gerard has been there for pretty much this whole conversation. And there's a certain point where the phrase go after him. Uh, I think the ears kind of like perked up on Gerard. Um, as Gerard is kind of in this like weird sort of like hunting sort of pose looking at you. And she's going to uh, kneel down to him and pet his head and say, um, uh, they say he's okay. Uh, we, we don't have to, we don't have to go after anyone. Uh, turn. Okay. Back go to sleep, buddy. <laughs> Just moves back in. Before I follow Saren inside, um, I do look, I look at the, uh, the rubble of Marvin. Mm -hmm. And I look at Gore and I say, do we take some time and, like, bring anything we can into the temple so that, you know, it doesn't get into the wrong hands? You know, uh, she did mention, Rimhova did mention, uh, looking through, uh, I couldn't hurt. I'm taking I mean, first watch anyway, so I, I, I can do it. There's something I've always kind of wanted to try since I got this trident from my mother, uh... I might be able to get us some help. Are you going to stab the books? What are you going to do? No. Oh, God. No, I can I can maybe get some some tri uh some tritons to help. Really? Yeah. I, above board, that is a bonkers reason to to call mm -hmm. for help. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're going to call and, Triton and I... Triton warriors. The cleanup mm -hmm. crew. To clean yeah, up. and I say it's probably like you know not. I mean, I'm sure it's fine. It's not my fault she didn't really explain it to me. But this is important. There could be things that are like world ending in there, and we all kind of need to sleep. So like we can have them come for an hour and help us out. <laughs> I love it. I More love hands it. make less work. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, you know what? Let me try. Let me try this. I don't exactly know how it works. Should I, should I stand runs back? Inside. Or... I runs inside and gets her trident. <laughs> and then runs back out. Saren's outside. staying outside to witness whatever's uh, about uh, to happen. Do you know uh, how to use this thing? Yes, I know how to use this thing. Hold on. Um... I mean, you're amazing at casting spells, but I. I, I so mean, it says that it's a ritual, so it takes me ten minutes. But I. Do you want a lesson? I I can show you how to wield it in, in a but fierce I, way. I, I summon one d four plus one Triton cards. You got it. Uh, go ahead and uh, and there's no reason to roll for rounds. Uh, yeah, so go ahead. Yeah. So go ahead and roll a roll uh, that d four. Five of them come. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we have a whole crew. Yeah. In... Not what Eldrin doesn't understand how this works. Eldrin's like, you know, like, I mean, I don't know if they're just gonna pop up, like where they come from, like if they get mm -hmm. a call. Like, I don't know how this works at all. Uh you you see uh five cards just kind of like uh comes in like from a uh uh, essentially they kind of like pop up uh i think they like they kind of like materialize as if like from this like kind of like mist that seems to kind of appear and moves forward um and you hear this like very like full clad armor um this like military <laughs> sort of like kum, kum, uh as you see <laughs> five five triton guards go uh with one of them just like uh uh, I think they don't wear helmets, but he like he, he might as well have been lifting a visor at this point and just like, and just said, "My queen, we are here to assist." Oh, uh, princess. Yes, I didn't know uh, how this worked. This is actually amazing. Do I recognize you, any of them? You have, uh, you absolutely do not. Okay. <laughs> you, uh, you have the, uh, you have your, 
uh, the queen's trident. Yeah, she uh, she gave it to me a few days ago. Oh, okay. Well, uh, uh, we're uh, you see, he puts his halberd down. Oh, nothing uh, to fight. Nothing to fight. Um, I'm sorry if this is a little um, like below your pay grade, but we had a, we had a really long day and. <laughs> house has fallen on us and and a lot of us are hurt what do you mean and... us where's the enemy that uh, the house has fallen uh, has made the house oh, fall and we will end there's no this. enemy um oh, the enemy is this rubble really... we need to find all the treasure Bad inside idea. the rubble Gwar, do not talk to them I like do... that like, they're not stupid that's I uh, your your princess um... commands you I'm not his princess. She's not my um, princess. Uh, I. She's my friend. Uh, nope. Um, so what? Okay. What do you need but to you be see that saved pile of from? And help? Behind you. The enemy is this rubble, and the the, the the. Oh, sorry. <laughs> of course. <laughs> you, you see him? She like nudges him. There's no like persuasion check or anything here. They're there to assist you. Yeah. But they are clearly like <laughs> Okay, so what? Like this, this is the, not the what we pile signed up for. Rubble behind you. There's I mean, I didn't just call you to clean up. I there's actually some like really like probably dangerous magical stuff there. <clears throat> and the wizard who owns it all is kind of sleeping right now because she almost died. And we kind of want to get it into this temple. I mean, we're not going to let you do it alone. We're going to help. Uh, That's not but... necessary, Princess. We will handle everything and work until from dusk until dawn. Or uh, we're only here for like an hour. This is a rescue yeah. mission. The relics involved are the hostages. Yeah, I guess we're... In the... <laughs> looks at the other. The other girls. I guess we're only here for an hour. Um, okay. Well, uh, men, you is it always your... the same? Uh, will it always be you? Like. I won't oh. abuse this, I promise. Like, uh, I, I, I... Uh, uh, you say I won't abuse this as the first thing you do with yeah, this yeah. is to clean up. I'm a 19 year old kid, okay? Of, of course. <laughs> um, uh, 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 I will be here this depends on when their shifts are are you sorry um princess uh are you holding on to the trident for for good for good um well it's not for evil around. Eldrin looks around and realizes that she has made a grave mistake and says <laughs> I think that was the intention, but now I'm not sure. So, uh, nope, I just I just wanted to, to just make uh, uh just I guess I didn't yeah, I don't need to know. Um right. Um Well let me uh I switch to primordial. <laughs> cool, yeah. <laughs> and I say and I say, um if you know honesty, I I was I I this was the wrong choice. I apologize. Please don't tell my mother. I, I should not have Wouldn't, called you uh, for this. Uh, it's it's fine, Princess. I I, I truly um, your wish is my command. Uh, Tritons, two arms. Uh, uh, to clean up. Yeah, Dangerous I mean, cleanup. Sure. Yeah. Just you know anything that looks like. Just be careful. Like the, the rubble is the enemy. I'm going to kill him. Uh, you see, that, that, I mean, at that, uh, you know, there's a lot of like the Triton guards staring at each other, but then they go and they try to sift through to uh, okay. try to like save what's valuable. I think there's also like, there's also a level of like, they pull out like a, um, a uh, uh, let's see, what would be. Um, I do say, I do yell over to them. I was like, if you find the body of Venris Senegath, can you bring that back to Honoria? <laughs> you, you, uh, no perception required. You hear one of the guards, not the one you talk to, go, oh, 
holy shit is it like is that <laughs> wait what um uh just like supposed to be under their breath uh um, but uh I, yeah I, I i watch all this happen i see eldred very uncomfortably switch to primordial and just looks uncomfortable and then after they all walk away to start sifting through stuff i kind of just sidle up next to her and go you fucked up didn't you this was a clear abuse of power, and I realized as soon as I did it. Yeah, th yeah, this is this is not good. As Noros is just on your other side. Like, Where did you come from? I was just, I you were out here for a while, and then I heard, like, I saw mist through the window, and Guard <laughs> yelling. Guards, watch out for that bookshelf. Oh my god. What? You see, you see, I think you full on see a Triton stab a bookshelf. Like, there's. Yeah. <laughs> well done! <laughs> uh, Eldrin, I... you, should, you should tell him to look for Patch. Oh, I mean. Patch could be dead in there. It, if they don't find him, then, then maybe he's alive. I yell back to them. If you find him, a, a Packle, and he's dead. I'm sorry, Princess, uh, what? It's like a a really fluffy creature. Like, it has a <laughs> ribbon on it. You see, you see Noros, uh, like, just takes a step forward and goes, I got it. It's fine. I'll okay. I'll talk to them. Um... A a after the day that we've all had, I think Guar is, like, finally having just, like, a blast watching all of this. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a... Uh, there's a moment where so Noros goes off to go and talk to the guards and then immediately comes walking back to you slowly and goes um, can you tell them to listen to me oh does he say that in primordial <laughs> or does he uh, yeah I think he does say that in primordial <laughs> yeah absolutely he's embarrassed like, yeah so. And I, I go over to the guards and I say, this is say? my husband. You listen to him. Uh, of course, princess. Now we know. You, okay, yeah. And oh. I turn to Norris. They just, did, they just didn't know. It's... Yeah. Okay. yeah. No, <laughs> princess, uh, yeah. do you have any uh, wine or ale in your temple? Because we're going to need some after all of this. Mom, well, I mean, I have some communion wafers, as I said, and I mean, there's probably some wine. I don't there's know. There's got to be some ceremonial wine in there, right? The yeah. blood of Persana or whatever you do. No, that's not what we do. Um, okay. Yeah, Noros, do you have this under control? Yeah. Um, well, I mean. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's I'll fine. help, obviously. Noros, no, I, 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 I truly think they're going to hate that. Noros, I'm taking first watch. I can be here if you need me for, for whatever reason. If you, even if you just need me to lift things. Do you listen, speak primordial, Guar? No, but listen, you know what you could do? You know what you could do? What I, I lean in. I lean in. I, yeah, I, I lean in and I say, like, if you want to, like, really show your authority. <laughs> he says in primordial, yeah, he doesn't know that. Yeah. So uh, I, I lean in and Noros, like, look, if you want to, like, look good with these guys, uh, I have no problem with you ordering me around. And I'll just, you know, maybe that'll help you. You're standing with them. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm good. I don't. All right. Why do I need a standing with them? I don't know. You just looked uncomfortable over there. I'm just trying to help Noros. I just. Yeah. Okay. All right. Look, uh... Wouldn't it be interesting if you had someone th thrice your size? just doing whatever you wanted me to i mean twice my size let's not get crazy um eldrin's completely like not listening to them and just interrupting she goes i mean like there's no way my mother didn't abuse this the first time she used it uh, uh <laughs> it is just right who are you saying this to just no one i'm just just <laughs> no one <laughs> yeah, yeah are you saying it in common or primordial in common yeah yes what are you talking about of course she did yeah, of course she did. Yeah, she probably did. When she's moving into the, the palace, and... she probably had them move, move them, move the furniture around. <laughs> I mean, they're they're probably happy. They're not like in a battle, right? 
Uh, I mean, this, these are warriors. They're they probably, would much like, prefer to be in a battle. Are you kidding? Yeah, I think all three, Noros, Eldred, and Guar, both go, no. <laughs> no. no Honestly, <laughs> I probably have deeply offended these five. There is no glory in this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you see, at that moment, one of them like kind of like lifts a cauldron and goes, is this important? Yes, it's, yes. It, it is. Okay. All right. So to the the important pile then you, you can put it in the temple no just let them make piles it's fine piles okay, are good yeah, make pile. that's fine okay it's easier we'll we'll load everything in later when you're I'll finished thank do you whatever the queen uh, uh princess commands so where do you want to put this i mean i'm the, the commander <laughs> at this i look i look back at war and i'm like the whole point of war was that we want this to keep this stuff safe so shouldn't it be in the temple Yes, but it's also important. They're not here for long. Let's just get stuff. We can move it okay. all in. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, if it pleases the princess, this is kind of heavy. Oh, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, piles. Piles is good. Piles, okay. great. All right, just make a pile. Yeah. Over yeah, here. Okay. That, okay. Books, weapons, items. That, 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 that if anything's yes. glowing, don't touch it. Okay. Um, <laughs> just point so it I'll out say, to us we'll get it I'll say at this point Noros does take over so here's what I'm going to ask uh, so we'll say first uh, roll me four luck rolls like each or total uh, this is just for Eldrin okay oh no uh, we got a two <laughs> let, a nine an eight and a fifteen should have let Saren do it cool <laughs> Love it. Uh, that's okay. It was to see if you succeed on something. Um, so, uh, okay. Now, at this point, roll me. Um, I think roll me an investigation check. I'm gonna go with it. It's a nat one. <laughs> I was, I was gonna use my inspiration, but. Why not embarrass uh, myself more in front of these elite warriors? <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, give me a second. Uh, roll me a D100, please. <laughs> um, that would be... Uh, 70. 70? Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, you... <laughs> uh, they're trying to, like, basically use their halberds more than anything to kind of, like, push things up because they don't really know what they're sifting through. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, about five minutes in, uh, someone... someone breaks something. Uh... And you see this mist that comes over the whole field. Um, it's it's centered on them, so they're making like a deck save for it, um, which I'll make okay. for them just to simplify things. Uh, but for the rest of you, you can choose to kind of move away from it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Saren cool. goes back inside. I don't like amazing, this. <clears throat> amazing. Okay. Okay. Do I have to roll for Norris? No, Noros will. Oh, wait, Noros was right there. Yeah, roll for Noros. <laughs> a horrible thing I've done. Uh, 16. 16? Cool. Uh, wait, deck save? Or... Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah dexterity save. I mean, you're close uh, to me. Cool. Uh, everyone except for Noros oh, and right. the, like, commander that's there, um, essentially. Uh, they're the only two that don't get affected by this. Uh, the rest of them, uh, the mist like kind of just like eventually dies down as they're all like you hear like shouts and orders and uh, you hear Norris is going, shut up, I'm trying to hear. Um, uh, and <laughs> the, dust, the mist settles <laughs> and all four of the guards are frozen solid. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, princess, 
Yeah, I, I see. And I'm going to say it's the one, it was actually, I'm going to say the one with the cauldron is the one actually that like, that didn't get, I think the commander's full frozen. <laughs> yeah. I, I see. I see. Uh, so this is, uh, do I move them to another pile or? No, no. Okay. Um, El Eldrin uh, cast uh, dispel magic on okay. the area. Um, I told them that the relics were the hostages, not the enemies. I'm going to say because I think it's a it's the idea of like it's not a lasting effect as much as it's a condition. Oh, OK, OK, because it says uh, a magical magical effect within range. So it's not a magical effect within the range. Um, I think it's something that like, hmm, the only thing is that like you're doing this from the after effects, not the spell itself. Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, that makes sense. So yeah, and you would know that. Okay, so I wouldn't. I won't cast that then. Cool. Um, uh, um, Han. Yeah. Her team uh, is frozen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe we should get from Hilda out here. Yeah, I. Oh God, uh, Guar. <laughs> I hate to wake her, but it's probably for the best. I mean, the uh, first time I use this ability, I really don't want to kill four people. You hear the other guy just go, "Wait, they're dead?" No, they're not dead. I don't think. It's fine. Norris just goes. <laughs> it's everything's fine. I am the your future queen. I have this under control. Roll me a deception check. <laughs> I know what I'm doing, I say. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, that would be an eight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have I think, everything I think, under control. I think this guard chooses to fail both because you are the princess and <laughs> secondly because he wants to believe that um yes uh of course uh my queen princess um okay we'll just wait for them to th thaw no uh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna wake up our wizard uh friend um you can probably figure it out okay and like i said i have complete control of this situation sure of course uh do you yep. uh, permission to not touch anything till that happens yeah, no, that's fine. Um, just hang out. Okay. <laughs> just right next to these, like, full, like, just... Yep. Like, frozen, like, statued, like, uh, yeah, frozen in, just... like, a scared stance, too. So let me ask, um, is this your first time being summoned, or have you you've been summoned before? <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna We're gonna cut from that scene. <laughs> Because <laughs> that's a perfect cut. Um, Milo, you are uh, looking at uh, this uh, creature pull out an orb. Uh, give me a... Hmm. Give me an arcana check. That's uh, a 12. Uh, cool. Uh, with a 12, um, who is most on your mind right now? Is most on my mind? Mm hmm. Clark. Um, literally inside my mind. Um, <laughs> mo uh, most on my mind right now, uh, has honestly probably reminds me a bit of Mickey. Mm -hmm. Um, I okay. just talk to my mom about uh mickey passing and um that's, it's just a weird weird little uh weird little v vendor guy like that could be that's like literally the worst thing um i'll say with that uh, oh do you like situationally it's up i mean it's up to you i think if milo is thinking of that person uh, yeah, I think you don't see anything in the orb. Mm. 
Okay, so this is your, your um, you look into it, and then you think of, uh, a, you think of someone that you're close to or know, and it's, uh, it comes up. When, as soon as he says that, Milo's gonna think of Rosie. Cool. Uh, his mom, not the rhino. You got it. Uh, you see uh, Rosie. Uh, uh, you see a vision of Rosie sitting on a bench. Uh, it is uh, so, somewhat late in the evening, and uh, from the uh, from the side on the other side, you see uh, what looks to be a shop that is closing up, uh, and she is sitting waiting. So, child. You know, this is, uh, he's gonna pull, he's gonna pull the tear back out. This was, uh, a gift from a very close friend. It, it holds a lot of meaning to me. Um, before we trade, what, um, who or what, 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 what's going on with Abby? Abel? Oh, she's just hungry. For what? Ah, uh, blood. So that's blood, meat, uh, bones. Yeah. Uh, but I can uh, find that. I can find that stuff. You don't have to worry about that. She's taking. She's, she's taking care of. Okay. Um. And Milo, as he's talking, Milo's gonna like. Kind of get a little closer and, and look at Abby and cool. Uh, perceive, um, perceive her. Uh, you see the. I think with like with Milo having this realm of like taking everything from a passive glance, uh, I would like a. Uh, I'm going to make it be a saving throw, but it's truly like a, it's truly in the realm of like how you react. So give me a, give me a charisma saving throw. Uh, 19. 19. Okay, cool. Uh, still beats the DC. As you see this creature looking somewhat like a worm, uh, but you can see like little tiny, like underdeveloped wings. You don't see any eyes and you just see a circular mouth of 50, 100 teeth. Um, it's only about this big. Um, and you see, you see like as you go closer to it, it like goes right up against the cage at you. Uh, and just lets out a huge shriek. Okay, I've, I've, I've filled you the side of their business. I was gonna, like, Milo's gonna, like, jump back and, like, if you're precocious. Um, she's, she's fine. She's just, she's just hungry all the time. Same. Uh, uh, as he gestures at all of him. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, and Milo, uh, looks at, looks at the, uh, looks at the tear one more time and, um, and as he places his hand on, uh, on the, uh, the orb, um, he thinks about Duchess. And, uh, okay. wants to, uh, wants to see how she's doing. Okay. Um, you see Duchess, uh, uh, it looks like it's a, uh, relatively like it's, it looks like evening, but not as dark as an evening as what you're having right now. You just see her just kind of like moving through the woods. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, as he's kind of holding both orbs, he, uh, he says, yeah, uh, yeah, we'll call it a trade. Okay, thank you. What's up? Do you want to forage with me? I, I would love some help. I just lost my entire harvest. Oh, so cool. I know this place. It's, it's really cool. Come on. Right. Right. 
Well, but if those people will not go anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's cool. Sounds good to me. Okay, sorry for shooting a rabbit at you. That was not cool. I was just, you freaked me out. Yeah. I'm, I'm Magpie. Magpie? Nice to meet you. I'm, I'm Milo. And Milo, like, holds a hand out because he's used to... Okay, this is what, this is what we do. Yeah, okay. I knew that. Uh, I met some friends who did that once. Uh, and you start to kind of move back on this. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, I will say this is happening while they're cleaning up. So, uh, Milo, uh, uh, yeah, I'll describe the scene. Um, you see, I think, Guar, Eldrin, and Saren. Mm -hmm. uh, and Brumhilda, as you wake up Brumhilda. Um, Brumhilda comes outside, so you're, like, all four of you are outside, about to kind of, like, also dig in as these, like, frozen statues. Brumhilda's like, oh, okay, um, I could, I can handle them, uh, in the morning. Are, are they dead? Oh, no, 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 they're frozen. I, well, they're, I, yeah. I mean, they're, 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 I look at the one that's still standing. Thing, and I was like, they disappear in like 30 minutes. What's going to happen to them? That's okay. That's that's cool. You're going to show me how you do that. Um, I can't. Yeah, sure. They're going to be frozen for a little bit. She fucked up. Guar. What? I, I was just trying to be helpful. Respectfully. <laughs> I mean, it, do you think a little bit of uh, like a sacred flame, like would burn them, or you know, maybe like that could help melt them? Yeah, I think you should. Respectfully, I think you should just not intervene uh, on that anymore. It'll be fine. It'll thaw. Out. Okay. I look at the uh, the the guy and I say, um, "Just waiting." He's far enough away; he didn't hear that conversation, but he's just kind of sitting there, just waiting. Yeah, no, this is fine. Let me just figure out what happens when they go back and come up with a story. I got this. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. Um, Everything's fine. Can you tell, uh, they're Anorian, right? So they're just going to listen to you no matter what I say? Yeah. Okay. Can you tell, sorry, I guess the one that's still able to hear me, uh, to not touch anything at all? Yeah. I guess he can move that bookcase over there. That's fine. I mean, we just thought that there might be some dangerous things here that we don't want anyone to take, but we should have not done that. Um, um, you you see a response from Bermuda's thing. Yeah, no, I... I get it. Which strikes you as odd. She would normally have a quick retort to mm -hmm. that. Um, okay. uh, Saren, Guar, and Elgin roll me a perception check. Like shit today. Same. Twelve. Twelve. Cool. Uh, Twenty-three. That's a Fifteen 20. for me. Cool. Uh, uh, Saren, you hear the sound of like a rickety sort of wagon uh, coming, but like very far off, um, just with your full rogue thing. Um, uh, cutting back to to Werewolf Milo and uh, Magpie. Oh, never mind. Not those people. Back it up. Back it up. Back it up. <laughs> Oh no no these 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 are my friends. They're, they'll be fine. I I promise you. Yeah, but there are the foraging and, and the spot around to get out. I mean, there's not really much in the in that clearing there. I was just saying, there's so many magical items. I can see them from here. Oh, yeah. We probably shouldn't forage in that. That's uh, that's my that's my friends. Uh, 
well, was my friend's workshop. Ross, is it dead? No. Oh. The, the workshop's dead. She's still alive. Uh, so she, she doesn't need any of this stuff? Oh, no, she will kill you. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, well, uh, my lord, I'll spin something. It's been neat. Okay. He's gonna, and, uh, and Milo's gonna like wiggle a finger at Abby. <laughs> just going to make it the, the doesn't have claws, but just yeah. Uh, such that. Okay. Well, I'm gonna. I guess. Uh, I guess I'm gonna. I'll uh, go somewhere else. Okay. Uh, as um, as Magpie and Milo were walking, Milo was hearing foraging and was under the impression that they were just mm -hmm. hunting. Um, so he was like he was gra he was like grabbing at squirrels as he was going and, and like pouncing on them. Ah! Um But I'm 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 hungry. I thought you just scared me. You just put it around my face. Uh, All right. So my. You want me to wrap that? No. Do, where do the webs come from? I don't really have webs. I I well I I so I knit. Um. But I, I don't really do it that often. They're not great. Um, What's a knot? I need to take two sticks and make fabric out of string. Oh, like magic. Milo's gonna like stare into middle distance for a second. It is, it is kind of like magic. That's true. Well, I have ever wanna show me how you make that magic. I can only see magic. I can't really. I mean, I got two things. Well, I guess three things. I can turn invisible. I can make. Uh, I don't know what he's. He doesn't have fingers. Uh, he's counting on his fingers. Uh, I can make people turn. In, I can turn invisible. I can make people fall asleep. Pretty good. And I can shoot ribs. But that's not really a spell. That's just me. Just being, a, being me. Yeah, that kind of. Just spider things, I, I gather. Yeah. And so Milo's just holding <laughs> two squirrels, and he, like, sheepishly puts them in his pockets as he realizes that's not what <laughs> Magpie meant. Um, okay. All right. Your, then, your, your pockets are getting red. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll save it for later. Okay. Uh, so cut to that scene, coming back, like, kind yeah. of, like, scooching back. Okay, um... Goodbye. Bye, Magpie. Okay. Scoot, 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 scoot. Uh, uh, turns invisible except for the eyes, and then the eyes go out. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, Milo's gonna uh walk back to the group and like while they're talking about how to handle these. Frozen... As soon as you come back, the Triton Guard just swings his halberd around. Stop. No, um, he's, um, he's fine. He's princess, fine. I will he's protect fine. you. He's a friend. He's a friend. He's a friend. He's a friend. So you don't need... So you don't need no, saving... No, um, no. I'm... I'm uh, okay. No. Just, uh, uh... I mean, I'm hairier than normal, but, like, I'm just... I'm me. I'm, I'm, my, I'm Milo. Nice to meet you. You can introduce Hi. yourself to him. We were all very scared at first, too. Well, I was much scarier the first first time you met me like this. That's that is very true. Yep. Yep. Okay. You got uh, as and and Milo's just gonna keep like well do you, do you guys seem busy? Um so he's just gonna walk uh <laughs> like walk into the temple. Um cool. and uh girls out and, and uh start snacking on one and uh kind of slowly walk over to Gerard and offer him a squirrel. Okay. Yeah, um, Gerard immediately. I watch that. Eldrin wants to go up to the, the only guard that's still left. <laughs> Just feel shell-shocked at this point. Just take the hell, man. So, what's the protocol 
when you get back? I mean, is this something that is recorded in, like, you know, um, some ledger? D does, does Commander Alarath, like, is she informed? Like, what's the protocol here? Uh, something well, I probably should have known before I summoned you, I will say. Uh, no, uh, no, uh, not necessary. Uh, we go back to our stations, wherever we are. Uh, if we were off duty, we would appear back in our house. Um, just uh, we appear right back from where we were summoned. So these four people, or these four Tritons, do you yep. happen to Two of which know? were off duty, yeah. Okay, so they're just going to pop back into their home like this. We'll alert their uh, partners uh, that... Well, we'll make sure their partners don't do anything brash while we follow them. From Hilda, how long does this last? Uh, you see, like, at this point, she's, she's, like, kind of, like, moving through, like looks up uh depends on which one they did uh could be an hour could be eight okay oh okay nope i see the bottom of it oh just an hour oh okay okay well, we could still salvage this then this is you know uh, yep, no need for burning them out. I turn back to the, 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 the guard and I say, what are the chances that you don't say anything to anyone about what happened here today? 100%. No one would believe me. That's us. Okay, perfect. Also, uh, this, this is a very... Um, this is somewhat of a secretive order. Um, the only people that know are the ones that would absolutely have to. Yeah, you know, because it's a very, you know, a thing you're supposed to use in a dire situation. That is, up, that is up to the princess to decide. <laughs> Thank you for your service. Um, certainly, princess. Um... Okay. Uh, is there any other uh, bookcase or? Uh... Yeah, I mean, she said that bookcase over there could be moved. Okay. All right. Okay. I will... uh, as he walks over, he goes, uh, "You see, Brumhilda go. No, no, not that. No, don't touch that. You're. I have no idea what's in that one. The other one. It looks at you. And <laughs> just continues on." Um, uh, Wilbur. As you fall asleep, you were wanting, to, uh, who are you wanting to speak with? Riley. Okay. Um, Uh, the DC is 14. Could you please roll me a spell attack roll? Eighteen. Eighteen. As we see the mist, the, the sort of like white smoke appear for the camera as we look inside Wilbur's mind. We see uh, the scenery start to shift. We see lush green forest. And the greenest grass. So we can see the small 
hills of the grove. And coming into view, we see Riley. She steps in and goes, Hello, Wilbur. How can I help? And with that, we're going to end tonight's session. We'll see you guys next week.